August 22nd, 2023. Uh, I would, uh, I'm filling in as chair tonight. My name is Brian Riddell, I'm typically the vice chair. To my left is Mr. Himmel, Mr. Chen, and Mr. Uh, sorry, Charlie. Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie. Mr. Brian. I know. I just had a like, complete like, lack of brain movement there. Mr. O'Brien, our clerk. Mr. Charlie. I almost just called you Noreen. <laughs> I'm really at losing it tonight. Um, and our uh, director of inspectional services, Mr. Conlon. Um, we only are going to have four members here this evening. Uh, so that means uh, you'd need a unanimous vote out of the four of us. So we'll give you, when we call you up, we'll give you the opportunity to come in front of us and uh, make a case. But again, you'd need a 100% uh, unanimous vote. If any one of us uh, were to vote in uh, the other way, it would be uh, shut down. So you will have your uh, choice to come back or uh, you will have your choice to present. I'd also like to say I spoke to the chairman today and he wanted me to iterate. Uh, it seems that during COVID, uh, for some reason, we stopped approving our minutes, gentlemen. So uh, he wanted me to apologize for that oversight, uh, for, for missing that, that we've, we've just been doing it for the last three years without even, or it feels like three years without even realizing. Um, but it must have happened sometime during COVID when we were doing Zoom meetings that we forgot to keep approving our minutes. So I'd like to make a motion first to waive the reading of the uh, minutes from the previous uh, hearing. Second. And then I'd also like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the previous hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, couple cases we're gonna move to start. Uh, ZBA 2338, JCBT Architect. Uh, they've requested a continuance I'd like to request the October 24th date. I want to make a motion, John? I uh, make a motion to continue ZBA 2338 JBC Architect for Variance, build a two and a half story side addition with a two car garage on the basement level of premises numbered 28 Furnacebrook Parkway, Quincy, and make a motion to continue it to 1028? 1024. 1024, 23. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, also, ZBA 23-51, Patrick Foley for a variance. We're going to move that to September 12th. Make a motion to move ZBA 23-51, Patrick Foley for variance to raise the roof lines of existing three-family homes to increase the living area of the premises numbered 166F, Quincy, Mass, to September 12th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. <laughs> Uh, under old business, ZBA 23-46, Jason Cole for a variance and finding to subdivide the lot into two lots and construct two townhouses with parking under each unit for one vehicle on the premise number 1247 C Street, Quincy. Is the applicant or the representative here? We didn't get updated plans, did we? Okay. All right, we'll put that on hold for a minute. We'll come back at the end if they show up. If not, we can move it. ZBA 20, new business. ZBA 23-56, Neil Johnson for a variance to construct a garage addition in the existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom over the garage on the premise number 72, South Bayfield Road. Quincy is the applicant of the representative here. Right here. How are you, Mr. Johnson? Good. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Neil Johnson. Uh, is there a best swearing? Yeah, we'll do that in a second. Just straight okay. your head. Neil Johnson, 72 South Bayfield. Mr. Russell, you want to handle swearing everyone in? Yeah. If you're going to uh, testify tonight, anyone in the audience going to testify tonight, would you stand, take the oath, and you'll tell the truth during the hearing? Anyone who's going to testify, pro, con, against? Only three, four people are going to speak tonight? Mm -hmm. If you're going to talk at all, if you're going to speak at all, do you have a way to tell the truth, not the truth, truth, and nothing but the truth in the matters now in hearing? I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Johnson, you understand what I said earlier. There's only four of us, so you need unanimous consent. Do you want to go forward to that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us what you're trying to do. So I'm building a garage for my uh, classic car. I'm over the line by 0.4 tenths. So I'm here for a variance. On the left side? Up nope, the front along the street. Uh, the left side, 
Uh, the setback is 13 feet in my yep. residence area, and I have an additional 12 feet over there. Okay. The setback in the rear is 20 feet, and then I have an additional 14 feet on that. The problem is my house is caught, sorry, not parallel to the street. So when I extend the front of the house out, I am four tenths over the 9.1 feet that I'm allowed per section 3.451B in non conforming lot with the extension. Okay. So I'm here for a variance for four tenths of a feet too close to the street. I know I have a couple neighbors in the back that are concerned about the project, but I am all the way forward and I can build 14 feet closer to them, two and a half stories, 35 feet in the green box. So does that, I think I'm doing everybody a favor by keeping it as far forward as possible. Does that give you any parking in front of your No, nope. uh, I have, uh, there's gonna be four spots in the garage with the left and I have an additional spot on the outside. Okay. There's eight feet if I want to parallel park car and in the front. That's why I bought it when I drove by. Yeah, if I if I and uh, what's your height on that total? It looks like it's like probably like so 26 So the first now. floor is going to be 14 feet. Um, the second floor is going to be eight. So that is uh, what, 22 um, plus a foot and a foot for rafters, say. So I'm under the 35. Yeah, yeah, it just looked like, I, I saw what you're trying to There's going to be about three or four feet, feet of peak yeah. uh, pitch to the existing peak. I may be a few inches up or down, but I'm well So under, still well under 30 yes. even, yeah. Yes, so correct. that's what I thought as well. Are you so, doing anything to the existing roof line on your no, existing home? Okay. I wish I had the money to redo it. It's okay. the greatest roof line you've ever seen. I saw it. We all wish. Maybe at some future point, I can extend the front and do the opposite pitch or something. But like right now, I'm only doing half the house. Okay. And you're keeping the shed that's there. Yeah, it's actually a pool house. All my pool equipment's in there, so none okay. of my neighbors have to listen to the pump and the filter and all that stuff. Okay, okay. And then I put all the pool furniture in there. Right there. Okay. Any questions? Uh, no questions. I'm good at this point. No. No okay. questions. We all set for now. Yeah. Anyone uh, want to speak in favor? First call, second call. Third call closed. Any correspondence? We've reviewed the submittal for the above restaurant project and have no comments. Anyone want to, I have a number of correspondents here, so if you're here uh, to speak in opposition, what I will do is we'll pull out the correspondence because you're obviously here to speak. So we'll read these at the end. Is anyone here opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided. First call, second call, third. I'm opposed to it. Okay, do you want to come up and state? If you, if you submitted something, I'm going to read those in too. It's just, I don't want to duplicate efforts. I'm, I'm, part, of the, I'm part of a petition. Yeah, yeah, there's a petition here as well, so. If that's good enough for them. Yeah, if you just want to state that you're opposed and yeah. come up, okay, then, I mean, we're going to read those in anyway, so. Okay. Um, so, as far as there's a, there's a petition here with, Twenty-two names on it, um, and there's some letters. Those can be written to record with the address. Yeah, we can read them in if you if you'd like. Um, this is from Barbara Quinn on 71 North Bayfield. I've been a longtime resident of 71 North Bayfield. Re recently received a zoning board notice that I vehemently opposed. Neil Johnson made a variance request to construct a garage addition in the existing driveway. Front setback should be 25 feet, and he's seeking nine feet, which is complete violation and frankly absurd. Additionally, the structure would be obtusive and would not fit the character of our great neighborhood and block sunlight and airflow. Uh, this is from Susan McPherson at 94 South Bayfield. I'm writing in response to notification. I do not think this variant should be granted. It's out of character with the neighborhood. It would make an already densely populated lot look more dense, reducing the little open space that remains, I'm a new homeowner and contractor. The owner was aware of the building limitations when the property was purchased, so this will not create an unexpected hardship. Again, my recommendation is to not approve this variance. Uh, this is for a different case, I think. Yeah, that's Tottenham, sorry.
Do we normally read these in? We normally just put them in file. It's up to you if you want them read in. Well, I think if people are going to make a comment, they could have sent an email instead of signing petitions. So it's going to be part of the record. I think the name and address should be stated. That's fine. I will try my best to read everyone's name in. You're going to read what the petition says? Because I have no <laughs> yep. people Yep. So we are the undersigned and concerned neighbors of North and South Bayfield oppose the variance request by Neil Johnson to construct a garage addition in the existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom over the garage. There's no additional information. It's just your variance request. Uh, Barbara Quinn, she was already on there. Um, looks like Salvatore Venzia, 62 North Bayfield. Arthur Sanders, 60 North Bayfield. Jeff Lindley, 55 North Bayfield. Kathleen Powers, 40. Uh, Kathleen Powers, Jeruso, 47 North uh, Bayfield, North North Bayfield. Um, I can't read this name, but it's 47 North Bayfield. Uh, Karen McRitchie or McVeigh, 39 North Bayfield. Aaron Leary. 39 North Bayfield, and Gerstel, 65 North Bayfield, Rita McGew, 76 South Bayfield, Jack McGew, 76 North Bayfield, Kelly McVeigh, 39 North Bayfield, Zena Venzia, 68 North Bayfield, Stephen Tosca, 50 South Bayfield. Again, I can't read this name. It looks like 87 North Bayfield or South Bayfield. I can't read. Um, Heidi Moriarty, 89 North Bayfield. John Clancia, 66 South Bayfield. Sue Gregory, 79 North Bayfield. Steve Walk, 84 North Bayfield. Cynthia Andrew Skov, 76 South Bay, North Bayfield. Caitlin Gerber, 42 North Bayfield. And Suzanne Cosgrove, 29 South Bayfield. <coughs> uh, comments, what do you guys? Seems like there's a substantial uh, petition with the neighbors and the negative on this one. I have a question. Is it ten feet the front setback for for a, a structure that's not that's attached to your house, or is it twenty five? Twenty five. It's twenty five. Yeah. Can, I, can I speak here? I, I, you, I'll give you a chance in a second. All right. That's what I thought. I thought it was twenty five. <clears throat> Is there a discrepancy that we're like, is that for like a, a different structure or something that he might be referencing with like 10 feet? I'm not registering any set distance. Okay. I'm just saying it can't be more than what it already is. Oh, okay. So you're saying you you're, you stayed on the existing line. Whatever the existing is, I can't be more under 3.451B if you guys want to look it up. Is that the case when you extend out, like if you were, but it's still not performing. So you it's still performing, so you're still not performing, so you're still not performing. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're, we're approving is the extension on non conformance. So when they reference 25 feet in that, that would be if we had new build. Or, yeah. All right. That's what I thought. That's what I was I was confusing as to how they were saying or who would give them 25. So it, it, so any extension of it, we're, we're good on that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments besides? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, John. Go ahead. Well said. Question on the parking. Um, here, question mark on the parking too. The uh, ordinance requirements. Looks like you have two existing and then two. So equipment. currently I have two existing. I had tried to do more when I applied the permit, but the city of Quincy limits you to uh, 20 feet wide, so there's there's not much room. So I am going from two spots now to uh, five spots, which is actually uh, making it in conformance with the regulations. And there's no, no uh, I know commercial parking structures have a, a ban against lifts. Mm. But residential ones do not in the zoning regulations. Lifts, you mean? So you're going to have two? If lifts, one yes, one correct. Top and bottom. I have a classic car that I don't drive all the time that, I, Mustang. that I'm paying in a, a garage right now, and I, yeah. I just want to store it at, at, at the house. I, I understand. So it's going to stay up, you know, 90% of the time. My wife will park under it. I'll still park outside. So there's only going to be three cars, even though there's just five spots. Okay. There's only three of us that live at the house. I understand. And then the upstairs, there's currently three bedrooms, and there will still be three bedrooms. Just the front bedroom is going to get much larger with a sitting area and a bedroom part. But it's still three bedrooms. It's all connected. No okay. door. So the bedroom in the garage on the second level is going to be connected to a bedroom that's already in Correct, the yes. Because the way the hallway is, you have to go through that bedroom to get to the other one. So I'm going to make it a sitting area, and mm -hmm. then the bedroom is okay. going to be over the garage. Okay. So it will still be three bedrooms. We're going to increase in the bedrooms. Any the, the only comment I have is that the, the addition lines up with the existing house. Yeah. Is that 
very that's what, that's what it needs to be. Yeah. Well, and that, then, that's why I'm coming for a variance because if I, if I, I guess I could build the house out of square and meet the setbacks, but I think it would look stupid. Yeah. So I wanted to build it straight, which puts me four tenths over the the line, just because the way uh, Bayfield is, it's teardrop shaped, mm -hmm. so all the houses get smaller as you get away from the beach. So, you know, I have even more on this side. This side's like nine and a half feet, nine one, and then it goes to eight seven, just the way all the lines are. So you stay off the street the same distance, then, yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. Brian, there's a question you had that if he puts a new structure on a non-conforming, does it does he get to adopt the non-conforming versus going to the current code? Yeah, that's basically what I was saying. Yeah, right. so that's what he's doing. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have to go to 25. He doesn't have to go to the current code if, it, if even though it's a new. Well, so they, they, they guys, under the code, uh, horizontal extensions are allowed. And one of the things here under the B part it says the proposed extension does not encroach any further forward in the required front yard which I would be 9.1 is my minimum, and I am asking for 8.7, so I am in violation 0 0.4 feet. So yeah, I understand that. So the, how much you need to yeah. go up, I was just questioning that. But that other table, principle. I believe, is for a new construction. Um, this house has been here since 1920. I mean, the garage is new construction. It's gonna be part of the house. I know, but it's new construction. Yeah. It's an addition, horizontal extension. I'm all set. Okay, you can have a seat. Thank you. Um, you have I don't need to see though. I have pictures or sunlight at full time in the backyard here. This is at 7 a.m. I know one of the neighbors, Barbara, sorry, the partition complained. At 7 a.m., you can see the pool in my backyard has sun. At 8 o'clock, the sun. 10.30, there's still sun, that's her fence in the back there. 11.50, there's still sun. 2.15, there's still sun. 4.48, there's still sun. And I think that's it, as the sun sets. So, I'm not blocking anybody's sunlight. Thank you. I mean, I know there's a lot of neighborhood opposition. I don't, I don't know what he did to the neighbors. <laughs> Because it doesn't, uh, to me, it's 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 not an obscene request. I mean, I think the only thing I could think of that I would have rather seen would be it pushed back a little bit. Um, but I don't know that that would make a difference. I don't know that you're still going to park if he's still using the parking for his own vehicle to the adjacent to the structure. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I just I'm, I'm I, I I I don't see it's a modest height. It's only, you no know, height, no problem. Yeah, it's only, you know, a living 20, space. It's, it's not even 500 square feet of living space inside, you know. So I don't know if you had any thoughts. Was there a councilor meeting? No councilor meeting? Was, it, did, was there any neighborhood meeting? Mr. Harris, and I've asked for comments back, and I never received any comments back. Okay, I know he, he did just forward the emails, right? He didn't, did he add any? I didn't even notice that, sorry. All right, council said he hadn't received any notice from the builder or resident appearing in front of the zoning board, and that application requires notification. I want to put in the record for them. For when they appear in front of the ZBA for the record, this email please put on the record. Right. Also, Miss Miss Quinn, so I have not received any notice from the builder or resident. That's what he, he was saying. He never he never received any notification from you. I, I have emails that you guys need to see. Right? That's all right. Well, we, we we can talk about that in a second. So. I mean, is that something we'd rather see and see if they can work out some differences here? Or I, I, it seems like there's probably not like a, a reasonable, uh, not for four tenths. That's what I mean. What are they gonna say? Yeah, Take what are you gonna say? Tenths away and set it back where it's put. Yeah, you're gonna set it back, you know, that's that's truly all it's gonna be, right? Yeah. Well, one of the comments in the petition was that it was a 25 foot Ordinance, but she misunderstood the reading of it. If it's if it's an adjacent building, according to you, is that correct? If it's adjacent, if it's no conformance. Yeah, if so it wasn't coming from the forward, it would be a fine because it's coming from the forward variance. Because it's coming forward half. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you get. You get a finding on that. Yeah. yeah. It would just be a finding. Would be a four, variance. Five inches, four inches. Yeah. 
I mean, based on all those things, I, 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 I just, I'm, I see that. I, I understand neighborhood opposition. I understand that you know people think it might look out of character. I think, I think I, do, I drove by the property a few times, and every time it was kept really nice. And I, you know, so I, that being said, I'm, I'm going to be in favor of this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also misunderstood the 10 feet or 25 feet. So having been clarified by building, I could be, I could vote for it as well. I'm in favor. Yeah, I'm in favor. Want to make a motion, John? ZBA 23-56, Neil Johnson for variance to construct a garage addition to an existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom over the garage on the premises number 72 South Bayfield Road, Quincy. We make a motion to accept as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So moved. ZBA 23-58, Edward Fleming Esquire, for a variance to remove the existing commercial structure and construct a 32-unit residential building on the premise number 21 Tottenham Street, Quincy. Council, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the record, uh, my name is Edward Fleming. I'm here uh, with Mr. Sean Galvin and Mr. James Burke uh, from DeSalle Burke and Sala Engineering. Just for purposes of clearing the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not the applicant, although I know that that's how it reads. Uh, the applicant is actually Galvin Development Company, okay. uh, just for future reference. Sure. Um, as I said, I am here. Excuse me. Thanks. Sorry. As I said, I'm here representing uh, Galvin Development Company. Uh, Galvin Development is the owner of the property at 21 Topman Street, which is a 27,625 square foot parcel. Um, Topman Street's right off Center Street near the, uh, in a, in essentially, um, which abuts the uh, Crown Colony um, uh, business development. Um, the site is actually zoned Industrial A. As, as that entire area is uh, in zoned industrial A. And that area, as you may uh, be aware, was the subject of a new zoning ordinance that recently was enacted by the city, whereby the city rezoned a large portion of this area, certainly on Center Street, and a lot of the area that actually abuts um, Mr. Galvin's property, from industrial A to the Center Street um, uh, um, transit-oriented development area. That, that new zoning district actually changed the zoning in that uh, residential is now allowed in that particular area. And I believe that you were um, a party to a, a matter that was a 325 or 345 unit residential development, or maybe the, it was just the planning board that act, acted on that. But there was a large development that was proposed in that area. And although that area in the past had been very industrial in its character, over the years, new residential has been built there. In fact, Mr. Galvin, when he built the, um, the office building at this site back in 2021, uh, also constructed a number of new single family houses right on Topman Street at that same time. So that industrial categorization of that particular area really has changed over the years. Um, Mr. Galvin, however, uh, in, in 2021, um, actually, uh, two was it 2001? 2001. Uh, constructed this building actually on behalf of a company that was going to utilize this not only for office but also for warehouse space. Um, he was a manufacturer of a particular product that needed a lot of warehouse space and as such the building was designed and the parking was designed to kind of um, meet the needs of that particular tenant um, whereby there would be mostly uh, warehouse space and therefore a very limited need for parking. Uh, that's caused, uh, but, and, and, but due to uh, market circumstances and issues that came about with that particular uh, company, uh, that company never took title to the property, and the Galvins ended up keep holding on to that and keeping that in their, port in their um, uh, real estate portfolio and needed to re lease this property to, um, to office tenants. And they did so from 2001 until present. However, because the building wasn't really constructed for a standard office use, uh, this, the office users that have occupied the property have, have um, been difficult to maintain, and they've also caused some level of parking concern in the neighborhood, uh, whereby the, the lots have been filled, 
and parking has um, kind of filtered out into the street. So as a result, and as a result of some other changes, um, and certainly the changing character of the neighborhood, uh, the Galvins have decided that they would like to redevelop this property, convert it in, from an office use now to a residential use, which is much more in character with the, with the area as it's been changing. And certainly in light of the changes that will be brought about by Atlantic Development, uh, just one, one street over, where they're going to build a 325 unit residential development. Um, so we believe that this new residential use is, is much um, much better for the site and much more appropriate for the site. So the proposal that's before you tonight um, is a, uh, a, 30, a 32 unit residential building um, with 27 parking spaces under the building. So the parking will actually dramatically increase by providing 27 parking spaces under the building and then another 22 surface spaces for a total of 49 parking spaces or 1.53 spaces per unit. Um, the site will, um, new drainage controls have been designed by Cell Burke and Sal Engineering that will be described in more detail by Mr. Burke. Um, and, and additional landscaping features will be added to the site. The, the Galvins have always done a very good job with maintaining the landscaping at the site and will continue to do so here so that it, it really fits in within the neighborhood. Uh, we look at this too as kind of a transitionary area. Whereas Center Street is a much busier, busy traveled corridor, there'll be, and there's uh, been more industrial and more commercial style uses out there. Uh, and this will be a kind of a, a buffer to the smaller residential on Cotman Street, whereby a new, um, a smaller multifamily of 32 units will fit between those two sites. Um, it's a better use, we believe, than combining this with other sites in the area and then creating a much larger uh, 300 plus unit development as was done um, uh, in the uh, neighboring area across the street or that next, next door. Um, we're seeking relief, um, in twofold relief. Really, the majority of the relief that we're seeking, because when this zoning district was enacted, Certain, certain sections of the area were not included within the zoning category. Despite the fact that this, this, um, this property is, is located adjacent to that, uh, zoning, that new zoning district. Um, and because of that, uh, this particular site has remained industrial A zoning and it requires a use variance to allow for residential. So we're seeking a use variance to allow for the, the um, residential use that's being proposed tonight. And although um, Industrial A doesn't have dimensional requirements that are specifically related to residential, it does have certain dimensional requirements that, that, are, that are referenced, including um, uh, setback requirements of 25 feet, and we're therefore requesting relief from the setback requirements. This building, however, will not be set back any less than what's, what's, what's uh, the office building uh, that sits there today. And we think that this will be uh, really in, um, it, it very compatible with the uh, with the existing area and the new changes of the zoning district. Um, so that's our presentation. Mr. Galvin's here can talk a lot more in detail about the particular reasons for the change, um, so that you understand that better. If you feel that that's important to understand, um, and Mr. Burke is here to talk about engineering. So, uh, John, if you want to, you want to add anything before I turn it over to Jim. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Sean Galvin, 31 Beverly Street. Um, we're, we're proposing the redevelopment of the site for a couple of reasons, and uh, the primary reason is that the office market's gone soft. Uh, we've lost our major anchor tenant for the building, and three quarters of the building is, is vacant. And if you followed uh, if you followed the market at all, you'd know that uh, commercial real estate is not uh, something everyone's hoping to build right now. So. We've got a uh, almost three-quarter acre piece of property in, in, uh, in a very desirable neighborhood, a uh, neighborhood we're very familiar with. We've been involved in the neighborhood for over 24 years. Um, and with uh, two things oncoming, one, the, the fact that the building is, is emptying out. Um, the second uh, being the, the TOD uh, zoning change mandate coming down from the state. And uh, we had conversations with the, uh, the planning department and I think you received a letter from uh, Chip Fatsy's, the planning director, in regard to this. Have you guys got that? Uh, I'd ask you to read that yeah. later if you would. 
um, which basically gave the city until the end of the year uh, to create a new TOD zoning district, and they've, pro they've proposed, and it's been accepted by the state, um, a, uh, an area that uh, circles T Station that's about a half hour, half mile in, <coughs> in uh, radius, uh, which includes this site. There are only maybe a half dozen actual sites large enough to create any multifamily uh, residential within this zone, which is the mandate coming down from the state. Yeah, we can spend that around. Um, and the city has identified them on their application. So there's the MBTA station in the center, and this is the, uh, the graphic that they created to indicate where they would resolve and allow for resident zoning, multi-residents. Um, and that's a by right. That's an application to the planning board for site plan review uh, in which residents would be allowed. Uh, the blue parcel is our parcel, and that's squarely within uh, that area. So by the end of the year, it's perfunctory that it's going to be residents, uh, multi-residential anyway. Um, we're a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, we wanted to come in with a project. Uh, we spent uh, several meetings working with the planning department to make sure that um, the uh, the density uh, and the uh, the use is appropriate for uh, the future plan under the TOD zoning. Um, and uh, I had a couple of meetings with the uh, uh, the planning director, the deputy planning director, and uh, we've talked to all of the city departments in regard to the project. Uh, they've, uh, the, as you know, the planning department hires a peer review consultant uh, to review our consultants, uh, which they have done. Um, we've uh, received comments from them. We've responded to comments. They've provided comments back, and we've responded to those. And I think um, we're just almost across the finish line in terms of the minor details on all the technical items that go into the project such as this. Um, one of those things we were asked to do was to hire a, uh, a consultant for traffic. So we commissioned a traffic study. Um, in doing that, uh, they, <coughs> the uh, planning department referred us to, to TPAL, to the uh, traffic engineer. And uh, she re requested that we take the compiled information that was already existing for the approved 340 units, which by the way is this parcel here, it's the Monte Granite site. So, uh, in addition to doing the current study, they wanted us to add into our study the proposed traffic created by uh, that new project. Um, net net, at the end of the day, we'll provide, we will produce about 140 less trips per day uh, than is currently uh, produced by the office building, um, which makes sense. The office building has got six doctors who, you know, book every 15, double every 15 minutes uh, of people coming in and out. Uh, will be private binding. These are ownership units to these condominiums. These are not apartments. So these are people that will live in these units. Uh, we anticipate many of them will work from home. Many of them will walk to the T. Um, so in terms of um, parking for this project, we think we've overparked it at one and a half spaces per unit. But we've also tried to uh, make sure that we've parked some of those inside and allowed some of those outside so that we can accommodate um, a real number of guests. Uh, should they show up, they'd have uh, parking ability in the outside lot. Uh, we've tried to think of all of the details that would affect um, a residential, multi-residential building like that. This that abuts um, single and multi-residential uh, uh, neighborhoods. We've done this successfully throughout the city, um, always being a buffer between commercial, industrial, and major roadways, and <coughs> one, two, and three family housing. Uh, this is the type of project we think fits in that neighborhood. Uh, building code would allow us to go uh, six, uh, five stories over two stories of podium. We've opted just to go the four stories and put the garage fully under the ground, <clears throat> trying to be sensitive to the height as we transition from the single family neighborhood into the commercial area. Uh, <clears throat> the building itself, we've set back almost equally to the building that is currently there. Um, the idea being is that we wouldn't be encroaching any further into the neighbors, into the residential neighbors. Um, the roadway that abuts the rear of the property is Rodman Street. Um, it's not an improved way. We have no intention of improving it or using it for access. It provides access to two commercial sites, the, uh, the auto body shop and the contractor next door. Uh, inappropriately so, I don't think that should be used for residential access. Uh, so that, that's basically uh, the project itself. We, again, we've tried to be sensitive to all of the details that go into this. 
I think there needs to be an understanding that this is being rezoned and uh, developers will be looking at these large parcels for more 300 and 400 unit types of projects. Uh, we think 32 units is appropriate and a good buffer and uh, um, be glad to answer any questions if you have. See, Alvin, you made reference. I, I just heard this the other day. In, so the state is requiring any city or, or municipality with a T station to pursue projects such as this with, with more density or they're going to withhold state funds. Is that what the so yeah, you said? That, that's basically it. Yeah. So if you read the, um, the planning director's letter, he refers to the ordinance and the state statute um, that uh, gives you uh, the, the the parameters, the general parameters of what, and, and this is this is not you might or you could or you should. This is you are going to as a city, a municipality who benefits because of the mass, because of the transit system. Uh, you're going to create this area somewhere in your city, and this is the, the more natural place to choose because you've already got too much density at the Quincy Center Station. North Quincy has just been built out, yeah. um, so they chose this area, um, and this and it's already been. This has been an ongoing thing. It's, uh, I'm surprised it hasn't been in the news more. Uh, but this is an ongoing thing, and it's been approved. It's been signed by the governor, and it's been mandated down to the cities. And uh, basically, every city has responded and applied that was required, except for the town of Holden, which for some reason <laughs> thinks they don't have to, and they're they're they're, they're trying to rebut. But holding their more more than likely, uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, so this is this is as much the city of Quincy's uh, proposal and us fitting our project into sure, that, that sure. type of zoning. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks for the clarity. And we have had a hearing before the, the, um, the planning board to date, and uh, through the assistance of Jim Devine, the city council of Ward 4, we had an opportunity to have a neighborhood meeting. I know some of the neighbors are here tonight, and their primary issue of concern that they raised was traffic in the area. Not understanding completely the traffic information that had been collected to date, and, and what we wanted to do was be able to share that we had done that traffic study, that that traffic study had been reviewed by not only by the city's traffic engineer, by, but by also by the peer review engineer. And, um, and to date, I believe the comments from the, the um, city's traffic engineer have really been minimal. She's not overly concerned now that she's obtained the information that she saw. So, um, Anything on the, uh, the front of, I, I know we didn't really get into the site, is there anything on the front of the street or is it just open access into the parking lot? Are you doing like any type of fencing out front there or anything? So, so um, uh, one of the things that was requested of us because, again, um, focusing on the, this as a transit oriented development and access to the T station is part of the selling point for this project. What we've agreed to do is build a sidewalk from this project all the way up Topman Street okay. um, to Center Street uh, with the necessary handicap ramps and, uh, and grade adjustments. Uh, the, uh, uh, the front of the building has a uh, slight elevation uh, change from the back of the sidewalk to the parking lot itself. Yeah. Um, currently, the, the building has a stone wall uh, in front of it. And we were hoping to reproduce that, actually reproduce that with the actual stones that are still there, uh, which are a very nice landscaping stone. Yeah, just trying to figure out some buffer there. And yeah. Some yeah. So there'll be a landscaping buffer in front of the parking lot. There'll yeah. be a parking lot, an open parking lot in the front of the building. And then to the to the left of the building, there will be a ramp down into the parking lot okay. underneath the building. Okay. Which you can see on that elevation there. Yep. The building will be brought forward a little bit from the existing building, but not dramatically so, and we talked to the neighbors about that. In fact, we had the neighborhood meeting and stood in the parking lot so we could share kind of those details with the neighbors. Walkway and drills out for some drive that kind of sidewalk will come along here. And then there's a slight grain change with some green space. Okay. And we'll we'll bring it out to the back. Okay. So yeah, having said that, I'd like to just have Mr. Burke just talk, talk, talk briefly just about the engineering aspects of the proposal. Sure. Thanks, Thanks uh, Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Jim Burke, a professional civil engineer at Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to sell Burke Sala offices here in Quincy. Um, I'll be brief. This project from 2001 was constructed. It was to, it was rear drainage and front drainage, two catch basins. Um, roof runoff went over the ground and direct connect into an 18-inch RCP that uh, flows into the city uh, city system. Um, 
we took that uh, system and, and uh, switched it around a little bit. We did a lower uh, collection system, a recharge system that uh, provides drainage, a very small watershed on the lot that uh, drains down the driveway to access uh, the underground garage. So you have that system which is uh, contained all by itself. And then you have the recharge for the roof runoff, which is a, a it'll collect the surface runoff from the roof and it actually collects the runoff from the parking lot above and also connects to the um, that 18 inch RCP. Uh, it's been peer reviewed a couple times, both by Chen and uh, uh, when I mean Chen, I mean Quincy DPW. Sorry about that. And um, also by. Uh, the period for the planning board. And, and, and Sean spoke to it earlier. We're, we're close. Nuts and bolts are there. Uh, new water, new sewer. Um, the water quality is going to improve. Uh, the water volume uh, storage is going to increase. And the volume going off site is significantly reduced because of the recharge. Because um, uh, everything's just running off now. It's pretty set. The site's pretty much paved as it is. And um, I'd say that's about it. Can I, can I ask one question? Sure. At the end of Trotman Street, is there a drainage issue there now from uh, Crown Colony? Is there any drainage up in, in back that area up there, do you know? So, so there, there, is, uh, there is a retaining pond that backs up to the end of uh, Topman Street. Okay. Uh, the neighbors could speak better to the uh, whether yeah. there's an ongoing issue, but uh, as far as we're on the, uh, the opposite end, right. uh, yeah. drain, drainage would, would, would flow the other way. Yeah, I, I just out of curiosity, I, I, I just know if yeah, you looked at that or not. This project will definitely assist. If there's flooding there, we'll help it. Yeah. I can honestly say that. Oh yeah, no, okay, yeah, just, I, I was just curious. I, I didn't recall when I went up for a site visit to the end, I wasn't sure what was up there, so. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Well, sir. Thank you. And as Mr. Burke said, that's been reviewed by both the city's uh, DPW department and the peer review engineers, and I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the letter that, that was forwarded to you by the planning department will reference that a lot of those issues have been appropriately addressed and that they are very close to making a favorable recommendation and that we've satisfied the conditions of site plan. Thank you. Any questions, then? Sorry. No, I'd say considering the new transit zone coming down from the state, which is kind of hidden, not a lot of people know about it. Uh, I'd say the project is timely. Thanks. A question um, on the um, the footprint. You said that you're going to expand out a little bit. I'm looking at the uh, dimensional request. So, particularly in the on the um, the rear, you're going from 72 to 10 feet. Yeah. So the, the footprint, uh, I think, in its reference was the fact that we're trying not to move towards Stockman Street any further. Mm -hmm. uh, it's marginally moved forward, I, I want to say, less than 10 feet in that direction. And that's what we've tried to do is take all of that construction and put it back, which uh, essentially in, ends up into a pocket uh, made up of um, Crown Colony on two sides uh, and a, an unbuilt right of way. And then on the other side, the industrial properties to, that are to the right. So we tried to push it back rather than infringe any further on the residential. And in in uh, in that area, Rodman Street essentially not improved, as, as Mr. Gallo said. So it's really impacts no one. Uh, it's not utilized roadway. And on the right side, you're going from 26 down to four. Um, can you speak to that? So that's just a matter of uh, of, of physical need. Um, the uh, the. The problem, one of the, one of the items uh, causing our, our, our zoning dilemma here is this interesting little point. Um, not sure how it ever got created in that way, but we've got this little bump up that comes into the side of our property. We would have much uh, rather centered the, uh, the construction uh, building around it, and we had some layouts that did that. We really didn't lend us with any advantages when we were all done. Ultimately, it would have cost us to go up another story and to bring the building forward and push it sideways. Mm -hmm. We thought it was more important to keep it down to four stories than to go to the five stories. Um, this, it, not only is this a point coming into the property, which we, we would have traditionally tried to purchase, it's a point coming into the property owned by two commercial condominium developments. So there's uh, hundred people to negotiate with. It just wasn't going to be something we were going to And, a, and, and the, abutter, the abutter on that side is also a, it's an industrial yeah. user. Uh, so we have no impact on the other residential users. Thank you. 
Any questions? I'm going to read in the uh, letter from planning. Dated August 18th, Chairman Aikens failed on us. I am aware that the proposed project at 21 Totten Street will be on the agenda for the regularly scheduled ZBA meeting being held on Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023. This project proposes the construction of a new four-story 32-unit re residential building. The proposal is located in industrial A zoning and therefore will require a use variance to allow for a residential development. The planning department is in favor of the use variance to promote the residential growth in the underutilized industrial district. Be advised, in response to the Commonwealth Section 3A of Mass General Laws 40A MBTA Communities Legislation, the Planning Department and the City Solicitor's Office have been tasked to develop a compliant TOD, transit-oriented development, district that is at least 50 acres in size, located within a half of mile of a transit station and provide the capacity for over 11,000 housing units. The City plans to extend the current Center Street transit-oriented oriented development district over the current industrial zoning districts around the Quincy Adams train station. The proposed project at 21 Totman Street is located in the air to be being considered for the new TOD. This case is currently active in front of planning board. Planning department will submit a recommendation for approval to the planning board at its next public meeting on September 13, 2023. In summation, the planning department is in full support of the issuance of a variance to allow for a residential development at 21 Totman Street. All right, anyone want to speak in favor? First call, second call. John Roterfail, 62 Grenwall Road. Um, I was at the planning board, I already saw this um, one earlier. Um, this is good new growth. Um, like Attorney Fleming said, there's 325 units that they're putting um, Atlantic Development right in that same area, and that's in the new district where it doesn't come to zoning, where it only goes to planning. So the benefit of this coming here, the people get to speak, but even on that one, at Atlantic Development, not one person spoke against that. I was the only person that spoke in favor of that project. So. This is a project that we need near the train stations that, you know, that we're saying it is the place for new growth. It's unfortunate that, you know, people live in these dense areas and they don't want them to get denser. But, you know, I look at like 175 Center Street, there's 375 apartment units that are in there. There's a ton of apartment buildings. Most people have never even driven in. 175 Center Street, but Center Street is a place which is a very dense area, and um, I do think this fits in nicely, and we definitely need the new growth. Um, so um, I'm in support of this. Thank you. Thank you, John. <coughs> Second call, third call, call that part of the hearing closed. Oh boy, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, Correspondence. This is going to take me a minute here. Uh, so, uh, 21 Totman Street, we've reviewed this middle for the above reference project, and our comments are as follows Grading and drainage. Is there any soil test at the proposed location for drainage structures to determine soil properties and level of water table? Two, the areas around the infiltration system, including the surface disability parking spots, will have significant ponding and may not be accessible under a 100 year storm event. Three, provide TSS removal worksheets for your various flow paths. Four, do the rapid infiltration system, infiltration rate of the soil request the applicant provide some infiltration chambers in the surface parking area before dumping the runoff directly to the 18 inch RCP pipe on top of the street. So these are old, like, because they just addressed a lot of these, didn't they? Right. At planning. No. Did they get any, did we get an updated one? All right, I'll just read them all. Right. Uh, it's dated July 27th, that's why. <laughs> So you've already done a lot of these. We have. We yeah. addressed that and there's been a response and we've addressed the response. And and you know, and for the planning board to act on this matter as well, they'll have to be a close That'll be, yeah, letters, have to be clean letters yeah. and all those matters being resolved. And we could certainly agree that. Yeah, that yeah. I, I'll just read through them and just, just in case, I'll just go quick. Yeah. Uh, I know you've addressed most of these. Infiltration chambers before dumping runoff directly to the 18 inch RCP pipe on Thomas Street. It'll mitigate frequent flooding problems on Center Street and also provide additional treatment for the runoff. Five, long-term operation and maintenance plans shall include 
snow storage, snow management, records of inspections and maintenance shall be up to date and available for review. Maintenance plan shall be included in the condo association six specific details related to the drainage system for the parking garage be submitted prior to the building permit. Seven, all abandoned structures should be removed or filled with dense grade stone. Eight, provide documentation to show the 1,000 gallon tight tank is suitable for the garage. Nine, one week prior to any land disturbance activities, the applicant shall conduct an on-site inspection with the city of Quincy. 10, the city of Quincy or the city's designated reps shall observe the construction of the stormwater management system and following at the following times uh, upon completion of excavation, upon completion, upon completion of chamber and crushed stone installation and prior to backfill. The applicant shall provide at least 72 hours notice for said inspections. Water, perform water flow tests with the city's water department, existing water main six inches on the street is old and should be replaced with an eight inch main to center street. All abandoned boxes and valves shall be removed. Three, provide calculation to show proposed two inch water service is adequate for 32 residential units. Provide one connection, use the mains on the street and branch off the domestic and fire services with individual gates, the six inch pipe with gate to connect the city's mains and install a six inch gate on the sidewalk before reducing the four inch pipe for the project. The applicant should confirm the appropriate connection with DPW prior to construction. Sewer, the existing pipes and manholes on the street should be inspected with television pre post development in order to check the condition of the system. To explain why the new sewer service will not connect all the way to the manhole on the street. Three, all abandoned structures should be removed to fill with dense grade and stone. Four, a profile should be provided for proposed sanitary, sanitary sewer connection or any additional gravity utility mains that may experience potential utility conflicts. General one, the city has a policy with any new sidewalk to be reconstructed with cement, concrete, room finish with a border two joints. Two, install stone or concrete survey monuments to delineate the property line and public right of way. Three, indicate whether there is any soil contamination on the site or any hazardous material from the existing building. Four, is there any guardrail and fence on the proposed retaining wall and around the property? Is there any concrete or granite curb around the pavement area? Five, no spot grades are provided to indicate top or bottom wall elevations. Judging from the grading plan provided, the height of the retaining wall may be significant, required design by a structural engineer. Six, the typical details should be provided for the proposed retaining wall, including this typical section identifying the setback from the adjacent property wall thickness and batter as well as relationship to the guardrail. Seven, the vehicular traffic on the street will be increased due to this development project. We request the street in this area to be repaved a prior to the So the building permit applicant shall obtain approval from the Department of Public Works, Engineering Division, and Building Department to be verified by the traffic department staff. Nine, the entire proposed stormwater and sewer system shall be cleaned and flushed prior to the final acceptance. Ten, submit AutoCAD file for the project. Before applying for a building permit, 11, upon completion of the project, submit a stamped affidavit from a registered professional engineer that all utilities are constructed and designed with no illicit connections are found at uncompleted project site. And 12, upon completion of the project, as built plan, showing all utilities, building footprints, and finishing grade need to be submitted along with an AutoCAD file. As built plan shall be in the Mass State Plain coordinate system, the developer and or the contractor shall be in design engineer survey applied to the installation of foundations and utilities to allow for proper inspection and data collection as the as built plans. Well done, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like the old speed reader, you know? All right, anyone opposed or undecided? I do have a couple letters here. If you did send a letter in, I will, uh, if you're gonna speak, I will hold off from reading it, but if you're not, I will uh, gladly read it into the record for you. Opposed or undecided? First call. Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you? Just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Tom Lawn. I live on 20 Totten Street. Okay. Directly across from 21. Okay. Um, concerns, traffic that was brought up. Um, yep. I know the study, you know, they incorporated the study from the other place, but we are a dead end street. Seven houses, right? One point of entry only, and then we're adding 32 units onto the street with additional cars going in and out of the street every day. What we enjoy right now is from the commercial building across the street is after five o'clock, it's quiet. Weekend, it's quiet. Our families come out, ride our bikes, hang out. Put a 32 in additional traffic, we will not have that anymore. Um, our quality of life will change. So that's why we're opposed to Appreciate it. Um, traffic that wasn't mentioned, uh, food delivery apps, Grubhub, Uber Eats, 
all sorts. I use them so I know they come. Mm -hmm. um, delivery, Amazon, mm -hmm. Prime, they all come because we all use them. Mm -hmm. So those will be additional um, traffic going in and out that we don't particularly see maybe on the weekends right now, but we'll see them all, weekend, all during the weekends when the unit, if the units are built or when the units are built. It's just too massive. It's too much traffic for our little street. Thank you. Sorry, please take that in consideration. Thank you. Feel free. Yeah, get yeah. one off. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Hunt, 20 Cotton Street. Husband. Yeah. Uh, concerned about the height. It's going to be another 11 feet higher than it is. It's going to block the sunlight. Also, I was wondering if we could propose to make it three stories instead of four. Less than the amount of units, less than the amount of uh, parking spaces. That would make it better. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity here. I'm Peter Stevens, 18 Tottenham. And um, again, uh, concerns have been raised about traffic. It's already, it's a narrow street. We understand the state ordinance and all the rest of that, but it's a narrow street to begin with. We already have to deal with parking during the day, almost on our front lawns on that side, with people who park at the T. And I don't know if any allowances are going to be made for um, residential parking on the street or not, how that would work. But the other issue is um, small street, narrow street, having that influx of cars from the, um, from the development, I still feel we haven't gotten any really good answers on the traffic situation, on the traffic studies. Mr. Galvin did discuss the traffic studies that um, they had done with it, but still, it just seems as though um, what appeared in the Quincy Sun, for instance, in the article that traffic was going to be um, significantly decreased, it's left out there, but there's really no explanation to us as to how that's going to occur. Center Street, and it's understandable, it's um, a densely populated urban area. Center Street is a main drag, to put it mildly, but if anything, it's going to make it more difficult for anyone getting in and out of Totman Street at this point. It might be different if it wasn't a dead end street, but that's the reality. But anyhow, I just wanted to raise the traffic concerns. And I still feel that all the answers that are needed for the neighbors, um, they still haven't been addressed to us satisfactorily. So appreciate it, Mr. Stevens. Thank you. Bill Sam South, 356 Washington. Um, I have two themes, and I hope you can keep them in mind as I move along. One is, this is a big ask. And the other is, what's the hurry? And what I mean by that is, this is a big change in policy. I'm aware of the TOD plan, but that was announced last June to be worked on this summer and provided this fall. Subsequently, just this week, and if, if the board's not aware of it, I'll gladly forward you the information. The governor's office came down with revisions of what the TOD expectations were, and they backed off, and they rejiggered some things, and it's still kind of up in the air because they're still pixeling out the regulations. But it looks going to be less onerous. There's also information that suggests that Quincy is at about 90% compliant. So what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? I understand that this is right next to a TOD development that was approved, and it makes perfect sense in the grand scheme of things of the way that the, prop, the area is redeveloped and this, that, and the other. It may well be a legitimate proposal. But if you approve this variance ask, what your board is doing absent, the city producing what it's gonna do, chewing on what the state wants and chewing on what this what the city's compliance is at present per the expectations you're basically acting as a policy board not as eba to that i suggest you might want to slow this down a little bit continue it for a while wait till this stuff comes down and then you have a better context i understand that you you know variances happen but variances should be for smaller things unless you're looking at a big part in the general sense, whereas this is being done within the context of big things coming, and this project foreruns what's going to happen, no matter how you look at it. And that's not the way it should be done. 
the new zoning board ordinance stuff should be presented, commented, approved, blah, blah, blah. Not do a sizable project that really will set the table going forward in the area. So all I ask is just slow walk this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zamzo. Sir? Yeah. Uh, my name is Peter Gachichu, uh, trustee of the Gachichu Realty Trust that owns the adjoining property at 9 Cotton Street. And I do have a couple of things. The first thing I'd like to tell you a little bit about the history of that area. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the dates, but there used to be a granite company called Peter Sedimentus, a Sedimentus and Sons. Where his, uh, Mr. Galvin's building is now, we had a <coughs> stone cutting operation going, and across the street from there, he had a granite cutting and monument company. Well, uh, one day, he had it up for sale, and it sold, and the next thing we knew across the street, they were building houses. Mr. Galvin, I guess, built them. I didn't realize that. Well, come to find out, this was a couple of years after the houses went up, I was in town hall, whatever, doing some research or something. And we were, uh, we were never notified that the rezoning took place. We never were, <clears throat> never received any uh, notice that they had to go for uh, rezoning or hearing anything. Just near the there, it was too late to do anything about it, and those houses were built. They shouldn't be there right now. But that should all be it. Would never pass the zoning board for use changes. Then we go back, step up around the year 2019, 99, I'm not sure. Mr. Gavin applied for uh, <clears throat> a small, smaller, I think, residential building on that property. I'm not sure how many units there were at the time. I can't remember, it was 20 years ago. And the board denied the application. Um, neighborhood opposition and whatever reason, it was denied. Then a year, a couple of three years later, they tried to change the use again to a state care center, and that was denied because it specifically prohibits any of that residential or <coughs> schools at that area. Now we're here today, and this board should be uh, ruling on current conditions, like the previous speaker said. Not what might happen or is going to happen that you know about, but conditions that exist right now. He has no, uh, he needs to, almost every variance there is to put that building that he wants to build there. He, he has a perfectly running commercial building on the site now. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a ten, uh, large tenant, but that's, that's the economics of the business. I just feel, I, I have the construction yard next door, and uh, can you see 35 units with balconies overlooking my property? and the problems it's going to create between both parties, no matter what happens. Um, you have my letter there that I wrote to the board. It has a lot of reasons uh, <clears throat> that I feel the board should do its due diligence and, and deny this application at the moment under current conditions. It doesn't come on, he's not in the TLC zone at the moment. From what I understand, they say it's going to change, but it's good. As of tonight, uh, <clears throat> he do it doesn't conform to the DOD regulations. I don't feel it belongs, he mentions in his application that it would act as more of a buffer to the, to the neighborhood, but I feel his small commercial building that's there now, as the medical building, whatever, it acts more of a bumper, buffer than a four-story, 35-unit apartment building. Again, I, I can't see where traffic wouldn't increase. Not It may not be by much, but it could increase some. I can't believe all those cars wouldn't increase traffic. Plus, the, the traffic is seven days a week with residential and not five days a week. And uh, between all, oh, I do have one other thing. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, housing, Quincy. Commission, mm -hmm. uh, they did a, uh, for 22 to 27 forecast or whatever. And one of their main points that they find it, huh? um, brought out in the commission is that the areas that they felt were ripe for res uh, more residential areas, let me see if I got something. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. And I'll quote, it says, general locations flagged by the housing capacity analysis that they did, whatever that means, for potential suitability include Wollaston, Quincy Center, North Quincy, and Crown Colony. As residents prioritize these areas for new housing opportunities over others, which didn't include South Quincy, where we are. Um, they felt that it would be better to develop those areas first, or more denser than the current areas of our area. And that's a commission that was commissioned by the city of Quincy to have done. <coughs> that's part of it, sorry. A little dry here. That's all right, I have the same feeling. <laughs> I had some water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I just feel that as of right at this moment with existing laws, existing zoning, and my letter, that it should be enough information to deny this permit at the moment. I'm looking at your letter. You kind of hit on everything. So, is there anything else? That no, you, really. Read it it, it, it'll be in the record, but I think you, yeah. I, I made sure you didn't leave anything out. Give you a little bit of history. No, I appreciate that. that. In the first place. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Anyone else opposed or undecided? Sure. Please come up. Hi, I'm Ashley from Dirty Totten Street. Yeah, I'm Peter, Dirty Totten Street, the husband. Uh, I feel like this is a dead end street, you know, when you have this 32 unit, um, there's going to be a lot of cars coming in and out. It's tight already, as is it right now. And, um, and then we have 32 unit, you assume people are going to have at least maybe two cars average right per unit. And then you have 49 parking, they're going to eventually they're going to overflow into the street. And especially when you have a party, there people come with family gathering and stuff like that. My new on there, you're going to be seeing a lot of cars in and out. As of right now, we've got cars parked in front of our house. Sometimes they're half parts of the block out driving. Uh, I've never seen so many cars come and use my driveway U turn, you know, on a daily basis. So, yeah, and um, yes, like more people may take the T, but that doesn't mean they don't own a vehicle. So, most people take the T own a vehicle, so I don't think it's okay. Yeah, maybe they can minimize the building, like just like just or maybe minimize one floor, maybe minimize the unit that might help the traffic situation and parking situations. So. Yeah, my concern is lack of parking space in the area um, because Mr. Galvin is technically introducing 62 vehicle owners to the top of the street and there's no way our street can handle that many cars. It's too much, too much to handle. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else opposed or undecided? Second call? Third call? Call that part of the hearing closed. Oh, I won't call that part of the hearing closed. I got two letters to read in. Uh, John Maragius, 231 Liberty Street. Uh, strong opposition to the application for the 32 unit structure and is in substantial violation of the zoning ordinances. I request that we've been to adhere to these zoning ordinances as continued waited waivers have a detrimental effect on a small neighborhood adjacent to the property in question. I'll make my attempt to be here, but I didn't. I don't think we heard from him. And then, um, there's no address, right? I might have put an address. Mm -hmm. Scott Shore, Hilltop Street. Can you use just a street, or can I read it in if it's just a street? He doesn't have an address at the exact number. No. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, Scott Shore, Hilltop Street, um, against, um, Sorry, this is not about this project. No, it's Hancock Street. Oh. Yeah, not one apartment of condo could be built in Quincy, including on Tottenham Street. The city's been overbuilt for years, nothing's been done about it. Too many times buildings, whether single family homes, multifamilies, or commercial buildings have been torn down and replaced by big, ugly condo apartment buildings. Lawsuits should have been filed years ago to stop this once and for all. Um, City's overdeveloped, overpopulated, too much traffic, too much crime, too many transients with no routes to Quincy at all, all due to overdevelopment. It's time to replace the planning board with people who live in the city and care enough to make sure it doesn't keep getting hurt. We don't live in the city. <laughs> That's the same one. Comments, questions? What do you guys got thoughts? Well, as far as I know, the transit zone but the state is not in flux. But they're pretty well set that what they want, what they're telling the cities that they yeah, want right. done. 
I know, I know a couple of people mentioned to slow down, but like, uh, you know, thinking about a project, uh, I mean, outside of that, we've seen numerous projects in these, you know, that we've kind of, we've kind of, Quincy's kind of been ahead of the curve on, on paying attention to. Well, the, Gal the Galvin Group has been a good corporate neighbor for a lot of years. We, have, we don't have any complaints. They come up here, they, they say what they're going to build, they build it, and it's correct. So. Mr. Chairman, any comments? Yeah, um, I, I listened to the, uh, the opposition. The concern is with traffic and uh, parking on the street, height restriction. I, I don't think four floors is, is that extraordinary for a new development, new, new construction for condominiums. These are not going to be rented out. These are going to be uh, owner-occupied. Uh, they have plenty of parking for this, uh, for this structure. And a lot of it is underground, so it's not even going to be seen, which is helpful. Um, I also find that uh, changing uh, industrial to residential for this purpose in this area does make sense. It's very little industrial use uh, coming into the city in order to welcome it. So we do have four T stations already in this uh, in the city, and uh, I think it's time to build residential use around those uh, those uh, structures. So I am not opposed to changing uh, industrial to residential use. Yeah. Um, and the traffic again, getting back to that, there was a traffic study done. It was again reviewed in the peer review by the city. It appears to be in keeping with. Uh, you know, typical typical traffic studies, and, and it didn't come down and say that it was going to be very detrimental um, for a neighborhood this size. I, I do recognize it's a small street, and it's a one-way street. I do recognize that. But you do have a quite a sizable building there now. It was a warehouse converted to an office. Um, there are lots of other things that could go in there that might be worse than having neighbors. So I'm in favor. I agree with Mr. Chen on the um, potential worse uses of the property. Um, the, the traffic is an issue everywhere. I'm not saying that there's a there's an easy resolve to it, or that there's a, a burden with it. But again, I see a residential use. Everybody, I think everybody has this image that the occupants of the 32 units are all going to come out the door at 7.30 and they're all going to come home at 5 o'clock. In our recent history, when we were re reviewed traffic studies, that's not, that's not necessarily the case. And there could be management of some of it with people coming and going at various times. Um, the delivery aspect is not something I, I thought about too much, but I, I can understand the concern there. But I've been down, I was treated at, the, at that building um, a few years ago. And um, the traffic in there during the day was pretty tough to find a place to park. And if they can contain the parking on the site, which I would imagine they would do with the numbers that they're showing us, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it being a residential use as opposed to it being an industrial building or something along those lines, a commercial use. Um, that's, that's just the way I feel about it. The traffic study eventually will go through planning, and if there's a remedy to the, what they believe the traffic is situation will be, they'll find it. They'll come up with some sort of, they'll devise a way to correct it. We've seen that occur in some of these projects that we've approved. So uh, that's, that's my opinion on those. If there's any changes made to unit count at planning, say so hypothetically they knock it down at planning, does that have to automatically come in, back in? If it was small enough. If it's small enough, no, it's only if it's bigger. Right, but okay. to plan it there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. I mean, I just, I, I was just wondering if it went, I thought if it went smaller, it didn't have to come back. I was just confirming. Yeah, I kind of agree with the sentiments. I understand the neighbors. I, I feel for anyone that, you know, is going to be impacted by, you know, a large residential building, but I, I, I just, it, it's, the alternate use will be, in my opinion, you, 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 like you said, Russell. It's like you could run into some some type of use that you don't want. You know. Um, See the board council have any opinion? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Devine, Council Devine. Did you want to speak at all? Did you want to say a few words? Uh, okay. I apologize. I didn't see you there. No, that's fine. 
He's hiding them on the picture. Uh, 117 Cross Street, uh, Jim Savai. Uh, about the whole neighborhood, I'm, I'm concerned about the uh, overlay. So uh, I don't want it to look like uh, North Quincy. So I think that uh, by controlling how we build certain buildings, uh, we're already at 304 that went in uh, pretty easy right down the street. So I really feel for my neighbors because they really uh, they have uh, their valid uh, thoughts. But I'm, I'm more concerned what's going to happen with the future. Uh, I'd hate to see 300 units go in there again. But at the same time, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, because the what the state's doing to us, I don't think's right. Uh, you know, the, the red line's broken. But yeah. with that being said, uh, we're, we have a tough road ahead of us, and uh, so uh, yeah, it's very tough. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't I don't have a lot to add. Sorry. No, I think I, I, I agree with your sentiments about the red line. I kind of laughed at them, you know, <laughs> shoving this TOD down our throat and yeah, and, uh, and you don't have a usable means of transportation. But. No. And maybe 20 years ago when you could get to Boston in 15 minutes, it yeah. sense. Yeah, now 45 uh, to an hour, it's not, nobody's taking it. Everybody's driving instead. Right. So I really feel that uh, the state is uh, doing us an injustice. But yeah. Not for us to decide. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I, I, I think it's a good project. I, I think that uh, just parking there, you know, over one and a half for a dimensional use, the dimensional variance on the right side, it's a, it's a non, you know, non-residential tenant, and behind uh, to the left, you know, I just, I, I think it's a good use of, of, of space and, um, and a repurpose of the lot. So I'll be in favor of it. That being said, you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. ZBA 23-58, Edward Fleming Esquire for variance to remove the existing commercial structure and construct a 32-unit residential building on the premise number 21, Hotman Street, Quincy, Mass. I make a motion to accept as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys need five minutes, are you good? Take five. Take five minutes. The floor is yours again. Do you want to read? Oh, yeah, okay. probably do. Yeah. <laughs> ZBA 2361, the Marion Group LLC, for a variance to demolish the existing supermarket and construct a new six story, 53 unit residential building on the premise number 731 Hancock Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Again, uh, Edward Fleming on behalf of the Marion Group LLC um, for the property at 3, uh, uh, 731 Hancock Street. Uh, this property is, is located in a Wollaston Urban Redevelopment District. Um, why are we here then? I'm sure you're asking. Well, the Wollaston Urban, Re the Wollaston <laughs> Urban Redevelopment District was enacted by the city. However, um, it hasn't been completed because the city has now um, uh, been required to undergo a MEPA, a MEPA filing, whereby uh, they'll, they'll obtain the final state approvals and then the, or, and then the uh, district will then take precedent. So as of right now, this is actually zoned in a business C zoning district. So this is much like the project that I, I, I came before you on. Um, uh, as what I call the Barry's Deli Newcomb Farm Block, where, where, where that, there was a residential proposal proposed there. We had, we had um, sought and obtained uh, planning board site plan review approval, and then we came to the, this board for the zoning approval that's required because it's still in a business C district. And as you know, the business D C district does not mimic the same uh, dimensional provisions that the new zoning district um, enacted. Um, some of those being uh, the minimum lot area per dwelling area uh, changes from 500 to 328 uh, square feet per unit, uh, and the setbacks have changed as well. So as of right now, we're, we, we are required to seek relief from this board as well. 
Um, the property at 731 Hancock Street is, is um, better known as the, prop, the, uh, the market, uh, the New York market um, that was located in the parking lot right next to St. Anne's School, uh, uh, St. Anne's Church, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, the 731 actually, uh, that, that parcel only includes the site on which the building is built. It does not include the parking lot that surrounds that building. That building, that parking lot was actually leased by the owner of the market and the operator of the market from the church. And the church continues to own that parking lot. Um, and, and therefore, the site as a commercial use was not a good one because it required the, the renting of, of space in the, um, in the church parking lot in order to, for it to operate. Um, as a result, um, when the owner decided that he was gonna sell this property, uh, different use of that site made, uh, was really almost required because parking needed to be created on the site itself so that it could actually provide parking for its own use. Uh, the property is a 21,344 square foot um, uh, property. The building takes up almost the entire site. The, the building as it sits today, the market as it sits today, is built almost lot line to lot line. It, it's, it's almost on the property line as it, on Hancock Street and, and um, Wentworth Road. It runs along the, the um, the, the uh, church's parking lot, and it also abuts the church's parking lot in the rear where there's a, a gated area that, that's utilized for the, for the dumpster area. Um, the supermarket over the years uh, has operated there, although there's been a number of different uses there. You may remember Eastern Bank was there at one point in time. Um, there were different markets there. I think at one point in time it was a CBS um, years ago. Um, but the market that's operated there hasn't been a good neighbor for the, for the city, hasn't been a good neighbor for the church. Uh, the, the parking lot that they used under lease was supposed to be maintained. It was very rarely maintained or cleaned. There were typically carts on the lot. And the market actually had the right to use the entire parking lot. So it interfered with church parking at times and it became somewhat problematic. Uh, during our uh, due diligence, we went and met with the pastor at, at St. Anne's Church and, the, and the, uh, the woman who was the, the head of the real estate division uh, of the church, and we had a great um, meeting with both of them. Um, and we've worked out an agreement with, with uh, the church that uh, my client, um, if he's approved at this site, will maintain the parking lot. He'll have the right to use about 15 spaces in the lot to supplement the parking that he'll provide himself but he's gonna maintain the landscaping as it, as it goes up the hill to St. Anne's, and he's gonna clean the parking lot. In fact, we just hired, uh, just the other day, uh, Matt Nichols from Nichols uh, Landscaping to go and clean the site because it hadn't been cleaned in a while by the, uh, by the market or the prior owner. That market had actually went out of business and the, and the owner then sought to, sought to develop, or sought to sell the site. Uh, Marion Group um, is, is a, uh, the principal of the Marion Group is a gentleman by the name of Derek Fitzgerald. I've worked with Mr. Fitzgerald on a, a, a couple of different properties in the city of Quincy. Smaller in size, but we did um, the, the old, um, we did nine units uh, down on Mill Street a number of years ago. I think we came before this board uh, for permitting on that. That was built and is a beautiful, nice uh, project uh, on Mill Street. Uh, the West Quincy Motors site, uh, you remember, may remember the West Quincy Motors site, uh, which operates in, in West Quincy, um, operated there for years. He's actually developed both sides. They had one, they had a building on one side and then they had a parking area on the opposite side. He actually developed 14 condominiums there, did a beautiful job, all with Brian Donahue, uh, his architect, uh, who designed those and, and really improved those neighborhoods. Uh, Derek is gonna, uh, I'm confident that Derek, with Brian's help and with Carlos's help, that Derek's gonna do the same thing here and you'll see the, the renderings of this building, which is beautiful. Um, so what Derek is, is proposing here, the Marion Group is proposing here, is to demolish the existing supermarket market building, construct a new 53 unit residential building with two levels of garage parking underneath uh, for, for 66 parking spaces. He's also, as I indicated to you, entered into an agreement with the church that he'll maintain the parking lot and he has another 15 spaces 
And the church has indicated to us that they would work even with him if there was a demand for additional spaces, but 15 is what we thought was most reasonable. That gets us actually to a number that we felt is really comfortable here. Um, the proposal, six stories in height, and I'll let Brian talk about the building in a lot more detail. Um, and um, and this, this has obviously been professionally designed. Uh, Carlos Sculte uh, from CEC is the, is the engineer on this matter. Uh, Carlos has been working uh, very closely with um, the city's, the city's uh, DPW department, but even more importantly, but with Wooded and Curran. Wooded and Curran was hired by the city to do an analysis of the flooded, flood control issues in the entire Wollaston district as part of this new zoning um, ordinance. And uh, so they're very, very familiar with um, any impacts of flooding and drainage and concerns in that regard. And Carlos um, has worked, Carlos worked with me on the project that we permitted at the Barry's Deli Newcomb Farm site. So Carlos became very familiar with the flood control issues um, there. And, and Carlos has now designed drainage controls to, to address uh, the concerns at this site. Um, we have applied, as, as we talked about, uh, for site plan and review with the planning board. Um, we were, we, and we responded to peer review comments, we, and through Carlos's efforts, had responded to the peer review comments, and we were essentially ready for a vote on August 2nd. And due to the uh, tragic death of, of Richie Mead, um, that matter, that hearing was continued um, at everyone's um, request. So that um, so that we, matters could be dealt with appropriately. Um, Richie's loss was a huge loss for the city. By the way, he was a wonderful man. Um, but we we've, we've done we we were close to essentially completing that matter. Um, but we but in consideration of the circumstances, that was continued. So we we had this already filed, and hence why we're here before you before we've actually obtained that final approval. Um, we think this is a significant improvement to the to the area to the to the um, it's and it's really meets the intent of the new uh, Wallace and Urban Redevelopment District. The Wallace and Urban Redevelopment District really wants to create housing within that community. And unlike uh, unlike uh, Beale Street, where we had re where we had commercial on the first floor, uh, the city didn't feel as though this this that was required in this particular loco location because we're a little bit outside that spot but it's within close proximity to the Wollaston uh, transit-oriented, I mean, um, uh, T station, therefore tr really transit-oriented um, uh, uh, development. Um, so what I'd like to do is, if I may, turn this over to Brian, let Brian kind of walk through the plans. As you can see from the rendering there, it's a beautiful building. And, and that, in fact, we went and met with the mayor as part of our due diligence early on in this proposal and we sat with him and we showed him some conceptual ideas or that Brian had come up with. And the mayor talked to us about his what he'd like to see there and how he'd like to see a style that was going to be a little bit more compatible with the church next door and some of the residential neighbors in the in the community. And hence and Brian did a great job in coming up with a, a revised design that really incorporated a lot of the comments that were raised by him. Um, so have you said that, Brian? You want to? Uh, thank you, Ed. Um, for the record, Brian Donahue, uh, principal of Donahue Architects here in Quincy. Um, uh, this project is is uh, a very exciting one for, for my office. We're, we're really excited about the potential of building this building in, in the Wollaston area. That I'm very familiar with as uh, a lifelong Quincy resident. Um, I don't want to. Um, repeat or reiterate things that Ed has, has said, but I'm just going to go through my list. The corner of Hancock Street is currently a, basically a half, a half an acre site. It's actually 0.49, but I like to round up. So um, the site is, uh, as Ed mentioned, currently improved by a one-story uh, building, which is unoccupied and in disrepair as it, as it sits now. Um, it is bordered to the south by St. Anne's uh, Church and parking lot and also to the west, uh, the, the rear of the, the site is also boarded, uh, uh, part of the church property, as I mentioned. Um, it's always been our intention to be respectful of the church. As a matter of fact, the, the mayor, when we met with him, was one of the first things on his list was, you know, you're right up against a fairly prominent, iconic building in the city, and we want you to be sympathetic to it. We had come in with something a little bit more contemporary, so we went back to the drawing board and, and came up with something which we think is, is more appropriate and fitting 
um, for the city and for the context of this, this particular area. Um, the cover sheet basically shows a, a rendering of a building from the intersection. These photographs, I'm sure you're all familiar with the site, but this shows the, the current situation with the building uh, on the corner, uh, a view from the Hancock Wentworth intersection, and uh, this is looking down Wentworth towards that building as well. As you can see, the context is that the Clay Street Housing Authority building is, is uh, with a near shot of, of our site. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, we, we have a, a 53 unit building proposed, um, and it, it is going to be two levels of parking and five levels of living space, a total of 53 units, and there will be 32 bedrooms and um, 23 single bedrooms. As you can see, um, the Hancock Street exposure, we don't have any access to it other than a pedestrian entry into the lobby. The lobby area is at the corner and that takes that curved space that goes up for the, the entire height of the building. So we, we've had an iteration of this where we had a, a, a this, this parking level at the lobby space is basically level of the Hancock Street. But we had proposed that, that curb cut an entryway into the parking area from Hancock and that wasn't seen as an optimum solution. So we managed to find um, a space along Wentworth property lines to get two two entries into the parking and also maintain a drop-off area for move-ins and deliveries and mail and trash removal. So Wentworth Street here, and this is our other side across the street, so at this point we have, um, uh, the grading actually works very well for this concept because the topo goes down Wentworth, so when we get to the entries into the garage, it's basically a half a level up and a half a level down. So there's no long ramps that are required for this. So it worked out kind of neat in terms of access to the parking garage. As I mentioned, um, there are two levels of uh, parking and um, 66 total vehicles, coupled with the parking, um, and maybe, I think Carlos's plan shows a little better, the, the church parking along this property line that's shared by the church. Um, so we've got, you know, we've got a fairly um, significant footprint for the building, but we also have some green space at the end for uh, dog walk park and uh, outdoor outdoor activity. We pull the building off the corner so we can soften up the elevations, the landscaping on the corner as well. And again, the, the key element here is that we maintain the entry to the parking and the drop-off area for servicing on one more street, so keeping it off the busy street, Hancock Street. So, um, I won't bore you with the minutiae of this, but these are the two parking levels. The, the lower level, which is um, accessed by a ramp off Wentworth. Down here we have um, we have a trash room that is serviced onto Wentworth as well, and um, ancillary mechanical spaces and so forth. The upper level of parking, which we're showing on that plan, has the lobby, mail areas, trash room, and um, uh, some bike storage. So these two um, boards show the building elevations. So we're at, again, this is the Wentworth Street elevation showing the two garage entryways and the entry lobby on the corner. So we have two levels of um, parking. This is actually a residential level. So the other level of parking is down half a level below this. So we've got two levels of parking and five levels of living, totaling 53 units. The building itself is, um, approximately 58, 50 feet, 59 feet tall to the highest point. Um, and again, we kind of looked at this as trying to implement some classical elements and some pitched roofs and so forth and dormers and bays and so forth to give it more of a residential feel and um, the material selection is at the, the base level, we're gonna be using a thin cast stone, uh, obviously red brick, composite panel system, uh, a uh, synthetic slate roof with some copper roofs for the dormers and so forth. So we think it's we think it's an appropriate uh, palette of materials, and we think that it's uh, it, it's a, a fitting design. This uh, is the Hancock Street elevation. Uh, west elevation, which is what you would see approaching from uh, west the west. Uh, from Wentworth, 
And this is the rear elevation for uh, the building from the parking lot, the St. Anne's parking lot. So this building section, um, again, not to bore you with the minutiae, shows the two levels of parking and the five levels of uh, living space with a total height of uh, approximately 68 feet. This last board shows uh, our modeling of the building uh, in context on the site. So this is the uh, view from Hancock Street approaching and heading south with the corner. This is a view of the building uh, uh, from the south heading north. Uh, church property to the left here, and this is Hancock Street as you go towards uh, uh, Wallston Center. The top, the top diagram there shows the, um, the building as it relates to the church. Um, the building is actually 150 feet away from the church physically, um, and there's a 16 foot grade change. So in actuality, the church, the, the ridge, the highest point of the church will actually be, believe it or not, taller than our building because we're, we're sloping down here fairly significantly too. And the church, as you know, is built out sort of on a mound off the street. So there's a there's nothing here that's going to be overwhelming to the church. It's significantly different uh, 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 away from it, and the height is not going to be overwhelming to, to um, this uh, neighboring parcel. Um, I, think, I think what, what we are proposing is, uh, is, is something that is appropriate for this area. I think we'll be using the most updated um, energy standards with potential solar on the roof, um, mandated EV parking stations, stations in the parking uh, garage areas, which um, is becoming more and more prevalent in most communities where it's being mandated. So we'll be doing that. And, and also, um, we actually like this project. We, we think it's a good addition to the city. Donnie, quick question on the back end. The building just sit, it's basically sitting on almost the exact footprint of the building today, correct? So like that the entrance way that the church parking uses today, that still will remain. We'll the same. Correct. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's what I thought. Thanks. Yeah. And the building's pushed back a little bit further than the existing. Okay. Let's Thank you. Sure. Uh, for the record, Carlos Slinty with Civil and Environment Consultants. We're the civil engineers on the project. Uh, it's been at the stormwater layout, utilities, traffic, geotechnical conditions. Uh, if it's okay, I'll just walk over to the, the board here for a second. I think the important part of what we're talking about, the layout, is the existing building is right up on the corner here. So that was one of the things that we took a look at from the development of the property, was not only from a uh, uh, presentation standpoint of helping landscape that corner and really make it a much more uh, pleasant intersection there, but by pulling the building away from the property line, we're able to increase the sight lines a little bit better at that intersection as well. So that was one of the things that we took a look at, and the version that we have in front of the board here today, in front of you here today, uh, is a version that went through a review process with uh, the Department of Public Works, the city's traffic engineers uh, looking at the project, and there was a third party peer review consultant looking at it as well. So there was a lot of input that we received from various parties throughout the planning board review process as well. Uh, so the, the plan here that we're talking about, uh, Brian already mentioned the, the ingress and egress from the building. Uh, we did take one of the access points off of Hancock Street originally proposed. Uh, there is a bus stop there as well, so great access to public transit. So all that infrastructure along Hancock Street will remain as is. Uh, and all the deliveries and the drop-offs will happen on the Wentworth Road site. So one of the things that we take a look at uh, and then a lot of attention paid to in, in these areas is stormwater management. Uh, as Ed mentioned earlier, the uh, city does have some localized flooding issues in the Wallston area. 
this site is elevated above those. We're outside of those areas. They've identified as uh, problematic, uh, but the sister project across the street, we'll a little bit more detail on that one because it's a little bit lower in elevation and about some of those concerns. Uh, but we did a number of geotechnical explorations and test pits to follow uh, to provide some more information for the peer review. Uh, designed a stormwater management system that's designed to provide stormwater recharge as well as improve water quality to the runoff from the site. Uh, right now there is none there today, uh, so everything we're proposing does meet the stormwater standards as well as the, uh, the City of Quincy stormwater management standards, uh, so significant upgrade from that standpoint. Uh, and with the improvements that we're proposing, it'll be a reduction in the total runoff. Uh, as well as an improvement in the quality of the stormwater runoff from the site. Uh, everything will be connected to the existing infrastructure in Wentworth Road, so there will be no uh, real runoff across the public sidewalks or into the roadway. And from a utility standpoint, uh, we're also going to be cleaning up some of the overhead uh, electric services. Right now they serve the, uh, the commercial facility that's there today. Uh, so we'll be taking those services, bringing them underground. So all the new services for electric telecommunications will be a new conduit uh, that's underground. Uh, there is water service along the frontage. Uh, that was one of the requests by the city uh, Department of Public Works to see if we could improve some of that infrastructure as part of the project. Uh, so as part of uh, the discussions with the city, we have agreed to uh, replace a significant portion of the water line that's in Wentworth Road along the project frontage, uh, as well as repave that portion of the roadway as well. So at the end of the day, it'll be all new uh, sidewalks, all new pavement, uh, some new water infrastructure uh, along that section of the roadway that was aged and could do some improvement to, to help uh, improve the systems in the city. Uh, so all fairly standard sewer service, uh, oil water separators, as well as uh, domestic service for the sewer, uh, and fire service, uh, all the buildings will be fully sprinkled, as well as uh, domestic service for the water as well. Uh, and then one of the aspects that we, we took a deeper dive into on, as part of the planning board review was the, the traffic uh, analysis part of it. We provided a full uh, transportation impact study to the city for review. Uh, because of the existing commercial use that's there today, uh, the proposed residential use really will not have that much of an impact uh, on the existing traffic patterns at the site uh, because of the nature of the use. Really, it's a negligible change to the traffic patterns in those areas. Uh, we did take a look at the movements uh, and went on Wentworth, headed both south and north at the intersection of Hancock Street. Uh, so all that information is in the traffic study, but really uh, a negligible change is into what's happening there today from a traffic standpoint. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Just for a purpose of reference, too, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you're very familiar. The Quincy Housing Authority building is a 12-story building directly behind the site. There's a 12-story building across Clay Street uh, directly adjacent to the Quincy Housing Authority building. And then the new building at, at, uh, at, at uh, Beal at um, uh, Barry's Deli, uh, Newcomb will be about a six-story building, which will be a similar height. So that will, this will kind of, this six-story height limitation will be very similar to some of the new buildings that will be constructed in the Wollaston um, Business District. Although, I think that the new district allowed for up to ten stories right behind the CVS, with that, and that may be entertained at that time. So that's our, our presentation, you see. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Any questions? No, a couple things. Looks like you've got a fairly robust landscaping design here. We do. Yep. Do you have any questions? Or? No, no, no. Oh, just okay. noticing it. It's very yeah, nice. significant landscaping in, in uh, not mostly, ideally in this area, but also there's a, there's a, a narrow uh, scope on the, on the, uh, the church side, too, and mm -hmm. there's going to be some landscaping in a five foot strip that's along the, yeah. the building where that doesn't exist today. So that people that are parking in this area, where they right now look at trash and uh, carts and other things, this this will be a new, uh, this will be a new uh, landscaping strip. My question: There's you have no exterior surface parking, correct? That's right. Everything's inside except for what you come to an agreement with the church for. That's right. Do you have a uh, long-term lease for them, or we do, we've them? negotiated a long-term lease? It's a five-year renewable lease mm -hmm. um, because of the you know, status of the church they, they only do things in five-year increments that's what they did with the prior uh, tenant but they've had a lease there with the tenant I think for 25 years 
So we anticipate that as long as the church is there, it will be a continued lease. Thanks. Thank you. So along that line, so you have a right to use a portion of the parking lot, but you're maintaining all of it? Is that right? That's right. We have, a, we have a right. We I think what we did is we negotiated uh, 15 spaces because we wanted to get to a 1.5 parking rate. <coughs> So that's what we did, and we we um, we've uh, we have not designated exactly where those spaces will be, but we'll talk with the church about that. But we've agreed not only to keep it clean, but to also repave it if there's problems with if there's holes and cracks and other other uh, problems, and uh, and also kind of landscape uh, the area all along here, which abuts the church. This area here. If you walk, if you've been there, there's a stairway that goes up from that parking lot, and there's just a, there's kind of um, a landscape area between this site and the church. And and what we'll do is we'll maintain that as part of a landscaping plan. So it gives you 81 parking spaces. It gives us 81 parking spaces. No rear entry though, right? There's no entrance on this side, the parking lot side, is there? Um, no. There's no, no, there's no entrance entrance on the on the parking lot. No, just those two entrances here. And this, this feature actually is a fantastic feature that was uh, that we discussed with the planning department, uh, which is a, is a drop-off area, so that parties that are, are, are visiting, um, you know, trucks that are dropping off packages have access to the package delivery room, and also folks that are moving in. This this is a large enough area to pull in a, a small box truck and unload, and they have access to the elevators right here in the lobby, which is fantastic. And having that off the street really eliminates the need for any interruption in the street. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? No problem. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, no. Another lengthy one? <laughs> Anyone want to speak in favor? First call. My name is Neil Johnson, 72 South Bayfield. I don't live that far from here. I actually think this is pretty well thought out. But the drop off area is not many places have that. So um, it's kind of odd. I never knew the parking lot wasn't associated with it. Neither did I. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I think it's pretty well thought out for this area. I appreciate so I'm for it. Thank you. Second call. Is this for both of them? Or this is just 731. Just on the side of the... Are you going to repeat everything for the next one? <laughs> yeah, we'll try to do it quickly. <laughs> uh, John Rotafail, 62 Grandwall Road. Um, I like this project and I like the next one. It's good new growth together. They're going to be about... I estimate about $300,000 worth of revenue to the city in taxes, probably assess around $30 million. So we need the money. Um, this is the zone where we're building, like Attorney Fleming was saying, 90 Clay Street and 80 Clay Street are both high buildings. And there's probably going to be another high building, maybe even in between them in the future. But um, I like this project and it's good new growth. So Thank I'm in you. favor. Second call, third call, call that part of the hearing. Oh. Excuse me. My name is John Breach. I live at 121 Clay Street, which is a road that runs directly in back of the church driveway and the area being discussed. When the MBTA in Wollaston was rebuilt, Clay Street and the surrounding streets on both sides of Hancock became Rat Village. And I'm not saying that humorously. I'm talking about when people were walking dogs, if a rat had been ridden, driven over in the road, there was a pancake rat that you had to pull the dog away from it. I saw this happen. We had, my wife and I had rats move underneath a portion of our house. We didn't know the city would kill your rats for free. So why don't we spend a thousand dollars on killing rats? I would like to know that this building, which was a, not the cleanest supermarket in the world for while it was open, and it's been closed and smelling bad for two years, 
is this building going to be exterminated before it's knocked down? Because otherwise, a whole lot of people are going to have to call the health department to get city exterminators out of there. And it's going to cost a lot of money. So there's a whole list of building conditions that before anything has to come down that Mr. Collin and his team have to go approve and go through, you know, and <coughs> is that part of it? Like, is it, that, that's part of it. That, so, so the process of making sure that, uh, you know, a, a building's rodent free, that's not going to disturb more. But we can also put it in as a condition for you too. As well. I would like you to do so, that so. because I, I hate to be the voice of no, 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 no. But I've, I've already dealt with it once. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I and and Quincy's been Quincy's, you know, had to deal with the problem. The last thing I think, it, it, and and Con, uh, Attorney Fleming's your neighbor there. I'm, I'm sure the last thing yes, he yes, wants yes, to yes. do is uh, <laughs> is to exacerbate the issue around the corner from his office as well. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, we can certainly write that into the conditions. I'm sure they'd be amenable to that. That would be great. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, third call, we'll call that part of it. Here. So, that, are you I, I just are you opposed or undecided? If you want me to wait, I'm going to do that side too. This is really <laughs> okay. All right, I just didn't know. <laughs> it was a condition. I wasn't until they had a meeting a few months ago. Okay. I went to, and I thought the building was beautiful. Okay. And Thank sound. you. Mike, you, just your name and address. I'm sorry, Martha Breach, 121 Thank Clay Street. Thank you, Ms. Breach. Uh, my concern is Wentworth. Is you cannot get. You can barely get a car in each direction right now, and there's a 7-Eleven right on that corner, right in front of where the other, the next order of business is going to be. So I'm just, I know they did a traffic study, but I'm sure. real concerned about the traffic getting up and down Wentworth, and then trying to get around onto Clay, <laughs> where we already had a lot of traffic, so sure. that's my comment. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, so um, traffic studies are part of it as well. Yeah. I mean, I know coming out of, I, I can, I've taken the, the Turn out of, uh, uh, you know, trying to get onto Hancock Street. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately it is a popular cut through, right? And uh, I know it's a, it's a difficult intersection. Uh, I like the fact that they were pulling you back so that you can see more coming out the other way. But you, you, you know, you have a point there. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that's addressed in, in, in the planning board's decision. Uh, I don't know that there's really any way to widen the street there for you. <laughs> We should sure. pull that 7 out. I think that's why the, the drop off area is so important here. So there won't be vehicles, you know, up on the curb. Everyone will have the opportunity to pull onto the property to do delivery of finance. I heard you mention that and then you didn't point it out when you said it. So I was going to ask that if you were putting it in the back, but I appreciate you could see it on that one. You couldn't see it on your first render. So. Um, opposed or undecided? First call, second call, third call closed. Um, oh, there was one letter, it's that same letter from before. He references three projects at Scott Shore um, on Hilltop Street. And again, his biggest issue is he does not want anything built in the city of Quincy. Um, and that this should be turned into a supermarket. <laughs> Which what causes a lot of traffic issues again. Um, no, I think I think you guys did a good job with the renderings. I think uh, you know it'll transform, start to transform that corner. Um, I think uh, you know it'll clean it up a lot. Personally, I like the fact that you're in negotiations with the church to to you know take care of that hillside and because there was always a ton of trash roaming around that parking lot, which I think spread out through the rest of the you know through the rest of uh, downtown Walston. So um, I think it'll be a nice improvement. I don't know what else you could have done there. I think you guys did a great job. Thank you. The 81 parking spaces, you got a great drop off. The design is great. It actually looking at it, it actually lower than the church. So peripheral will look, look nice. So yeah. I'm in favor. Thank you. I had one question with the traffic study just to that one's point. Uh, was there any consideration about the pros and cons of turning uh, went with into a one-way street? 
We did look at that. Uh, ultimately, uh, speaking with the planning department, we didn't want to alter the existing traffic patterns because turning it one way would increase it potentially on Clay Street. On Clay Street. Yeah. We didn't want to do that. And turning mm -hmm. it one way or the other way it makes it difficult for the loading, maneuvering, and everything to work for that site. So yeah. we did look at it. We also did look at geometric modifications along Wentworth. Uh, ultimately, there's nothing we could really do. The right of way is already dedicated there. It is wide enough for two-way traffic. There's no on street parking. Uh, we're not proposing any, so we're going to maintain that, but acknowledge that clay is tight because of the on-street parking for, for the two-way traffic there, but, you know, that's, we don't really in have terms control of, over what's happening. Yeah, on in terms of your professional opinion, seeing projects like this all the time, when we see it all the time, it, you know, compared to the prior uses, the, this is a much more... Uh, yeah, it's a lower generator. It's a lower right? generator, and it's also a lower per hour generator. It might might yield more trips overall, but it, it will be per hour. It'll be way down, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Related to the traffic, there's one point. Did you look at a, at a right turn only coming out of Wentworth onto Hancock because of the way the stop line is for Hancock? Yeah, you get you get stuck there going left. You can't. Yeah, you, you can't, can't go left. Yeah. You can't go left on that. Yeah, we didn't look at formally making that change, uh, but we're happy to talk to the traffic department, uh, and if they have that as a recommendation, we can certainly take a look at it. Because a, a better solution probably would be to come out um, up at up at Hancock and Beach, on to, if you had to take a left. You know what I mean? Because you, that intersection is crazy trying to come out of there on a yeah, left turn. Yeah, you get backed up four cars or something. Yeah, even when no I mean, even, even the 7-Eleven has their own loop detector in there because that's how the, the traffic is generated by them. So. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the, the traffic that would be going northbound, essentially on Hancock, or all points northbound, would likely make that left on Wentworth and the right on Clay to get out to Beale and, and Hancock towards that intersection because you're making more right turns, so you're not stuck at, at a left turn queue there. But you might keep that in mind. Yeah. A right turn only coming out of one point. Yeah. We'll certainly work with the city. Uh, if the city has that right. recommendation. Or at least a suggestion. Yep. So otherwise, I'm in favor of the project. I think it's a good project. I'm happy that there's not a lot of retail on the first floor. It's strictly going to be uh, residential. Um, so I think it's going to be good for the community. It's close to that T. Um, so I'm in favor. Okay. I agree. Yeah. You want to read it? And we'll just put in the you know, the mitigation that Rat mitigation? Yeah, rat mitigation. <laughs> ZBA 23-61, the Marion Group LLC, for variance to demolish the existing supermarket and construct a new six-story, 53-unit residential building on the premise numbered 731 Hancock Street with rodent <laughs> remediation. Second. All those in favor? Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So no, move. move through this next one quicker. Oh, I, I, I need to open that up real quick. You do. Just say it. <laughs> I forgot you're, I'm not going to read them, but conditions will be uh, required to be approved prior to any building. Prior, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Conditions to be approved. <laughs> ZBA 2362, the Marion Group LLC, for a variance to construct a new four story, 27 unit residential building on the premise on the 13 Wentworth Road, Quincy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members back of the board. Again. Again. Yeah, back again. <laughs> um, uh, again, Edward Fleming for the Marion Group LLC, 13 Wentworth Road. Um, this project, this property is directly across the street. It's the parking lot, as we all know it. Um, and, it, and, and again, it's, uh, it, it's, it's actually not owned by the church. It's actually owned by a private owner, but it's a separate parcel under separate, you know, it's under the same control of the, as, the, as the market, but it's a separate, it's a completely separate um, uh, parcel. Uh, so it's not really, it was never, it was, um, it was only used uh, as parking for the market by agreement of the owner. Sure. So if the owner chose not to permit that parking for this particular market site, that parking would not be available and that site would have had no parking at all. Uh, this property right now is, as I said, an existing parking lot. It's a 15,246 square foot parcel of land. It's also zoned business C, but it's within the new Wollaston Urban Redevelopment District. Um, and it was used, as I said, for overflow parking for the, three, for the 731 Hancock Street site. 
I assume um, some folks from the church uh, parked there as well, although it wasn't owned by the church, um, it, but it was done uh, essentially by agreement. Um, the site does not have any drainage, or has very limited drainage controls, I should say, and, and, and uh, Carlos will talk about that in more detail in the existing status of those drainage controls, but it has no green space whatsoever. This proposal is to construct a new 27 unit uh, residential building um, with two levels of parking underneath again to provide parking for this particular uh, building with 38 parking spaces on the property. Um, the building will be four stories in height, not six as the building across the street, so it will be lower um, in uh, conjunction with the neighbors on the, the residential neighbors uh, uh, next door. Um, it will also include professionally designed drainage controls that Carlos will talk about in more detail and the addition of, op of green space. And as you can see, this green space really that surrounds the building here on the, on the, photo, on the, uh, the plan that you see um, that will provide about 10 feet of green space on both sides and also in the back of the site along with some uh, green space in the front. It will have two entrances to the parking lot as you, as you can see there that, that Brian can talk about in more detail. Um, this is a this is a really a sister project for the for the existing project. We think it's a great new project. It exists. It just continues this um, growth uh, of um, of residential in this uh, transit oriented area. We have also this matter has also gone before the planning board. We had a planning board meeting. We made modifications. Carlos has actually worked really uh, closely with Wooded and Curran because Wooded and Curran had some flood control. Uh, information that was um, that that Carlos was uh, made available to Carlos so that he could redesign the drainage controls to address this site. Right now, if you know this site at all, or you know the history of Wollaston, the corner of the site, um, uh, this back area had had uh, become quite wet and somewhat flooded in, in the past. In a year, a number of years ago, uh, the Quincy Housing Authority redid all of the drainage controls in the parking lot and they repaid their entire parking lot. And that really um, uh, helped to, to alleviate some of the drainage control issues that were there. It still floods, however, because there's a, a catch basin right here that I'll let Carlos talk about in more detail. Um, this new drainage controls will help to alleviate the existing problems that exist there. Uh, so that it will not impact the abutting neighbors um, as it has in the past because of, of the lack of drainage control measures. So let Brian kind of walk through the plans again and then have Carlos talk about that drainage. Good evening once again, uh, uh, Brian Donahue, architect uh, of um, uh, It sort of stole my thunder. We, we've been looking at this as a little sister to the building across the street, or a little brother, as, as you'll have it. So what we're trying to do there is just m basically uh, make it compatible with the larger building across the street in terms of the, the building forms, the materials. We're still thinking about the same uh, uh, thin stone base for the parking area and brick and um, composite panels for the upper level and uh, the actual top level of living space is built somewhat into the, into the, uh, into the roof as well. So um, this, this building is 27 total units and the uh, ratio is actually um, 12 two bedroom units and 15 one bedroom units. We have 38 car parking on two levels um, the average unit size for this is a little bit smaller than across the street. They're about 870 to 900 square feet for the twos and 780 to 800 for the, for the one bed um, apartments. So as you, as you know, as uh, Carlos's plans to pick the site drops off fairly quickly from Wentworth Street to the, to the rear of the site. So what we tried to do was make the parking work um, similarly to the way we did it across the street as in going up half a level and down half a level. So we're using, we're using the, the topography to accommodate the parking. Uh, again, some context photos showing a Clay Street building, the 12-story building, uh, which is directly behind this. 
Um, this is also looking towards the CV, uh, the 7-Eleven on the corner in up West Street. I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the neighborhood. Um, and this, this site plan shows the relationship to the, the project across the street, the, the green uh, area buffer that we have surrounding the site, and we're about 20 feet off Wentworth Street. Actually, the, the lobby is about 12 feet off the street because that protrudes out onto Wentworth. Uh, again, we have two garages, two garage doors, so that, again, the parking is totally enclosed within the building, so as you come off, one, one parking ramp goes up and one parking ramp goes halfway down, and we're utilizing the topography, as I mentioned, to, to access those. So on the ground level, we've got uh, you know, trash room, uh, mail delivery areas, and uh, your code compliant accessibility elevators and stairs and so forth that um, um, we do in, in our project. So again, this, this shows that we don't have the, the, the property here to do to do the drop-off that we have across the street, so we'll be doing sort of curb, curbside deliveries and um, access for parking. Being a smaller building, we don't think that's going to be uh, too much of a tax on the roadway. Um, so car trucks and deliveries and cars will be pulling up you know, on the sidewalk here to, to access the building. But the, the tenants will all have um, um, parking spaces within the building. The two parking levels on the right and the typical floor plans above where we've got uh, two bedroom units and one bedroom units, uh, double loaded corridor, simple simple layout, very uh, very uh, uncomplicated as a building. Again, as I mentioned, we're, we're using similar materials that we use across the street. So we've got the, the garage entries and the, and the lobby entry at grade, obviously with a, a, a thin cast stone base um, red brick, uh, middle portion, and composite panels, and uh, a synthetic slate roof for the, uh, this is the Wentworth elevation, one of the ends. Uh, this building, the average grade, average, from the average grade, the height of this building is uh, approximately 55 feet tall to the, to the highest point of the ridge. So again, we've modeled up this building and, and put it on the site, so you can see the relationship as you're looking as you're looking from the intersection of Hancock down Wentworth. You see the relationship between the two buildings. This one being four stories and that one being six. So you feel that there's a nice, uh, nice uh, sympathetic relationship between the two buildings. And this is an elevation looking out towards towards Hancock Street. Um, so I think the same the same criteria apply to this project as across the street in terms of, of um, energy resources and sustainability, um, as well as um, um, energy star appliances, all that stuff that, that is kind of mandated by the code these days. So this is actually an interesting um, photograph that shows the relationship between the church and these two sites here um, on one. Um, that's uh, basically my presentation, so I'd be happy to answer. And any that's questions. my office, if anyone cares. <laughs> that's why it's highlighted. Carlos, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have some questions. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for your mind. Um, so, a couple of questions. First, maybe this for the mayor group, maybe for you. Is it going to be condo or apartment? Um, I think as of right now, it's going to be apartments. Okay. Uh, but he said it's going to be dictated by market conditions because the owner actually was thinking about holding on to this and maintaining it in its own uh, development portfolio instead of managing it. One of the other questions related to that is the size of the two bedrooms. I've never, well, I'm not familiar with two bedrooms that are under 870 square feet. It seems to me that those are pretty small units. I'm wondering whether there are efficiencies built in that I'm not aware of, efficiency kitchens or something like that. Um, we haven't really, as you can tell by the plans, we haven't really got into the unit layouts yet, but we, we feel that we have them designed like in the office in our minds. We, we know that they're going to work. So there may be some manipulation of, bear, of optimizing walls to make them more efficient, but um, the key point is to get to the 27 units. And it may end up being more ones than twos because the, the twos are a bit, a bit tight. So, but on the corners of the building, there's more opportunities to put two bedroom units because you have living space in the corner and then separate the bedrooms. So we do feel that they're, um, 
they're going to be on the smaller side for sure, but it is it is doable. We've done units that are eight, nine hundred square feet, two bedrooms, plenty of times. Right. You know, they're not that generous, but they, they work. I'm just trying to get a sense as to whether it's going to be owner occupied or rented out, and given the size of them, you know, the, the applicants for these units. So. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Carlos Cote with Civil and Time and Consultants, the, uh, the engineers on the project. Uh, I'll just walk through briefly. Uh, the landscape plan that you have in front of you, uh, again, trying to maximize the setbacks that we have along Wentworth Road, uh, providing additional deciduous trees, ground cover, shrubs, plantings to really help improve that streetscape. Uh, as Ed mentioned earlier, it's an existing parking lot today. There's no real landscaping to speak of there. So this would be an improvement as it relates to the uh, interaction with the streetscape. And one of the things that we did take a look at for this project, as well as the uh, project across the street, was ADA accessibility and pedestrian connectivity to the environment. Uh, so we are actually widening the sidewalks uh, along Wentworth Road on that side of the street. It, it happens that one half of the road, due to how the roadway was originally constructed, is, is a little bit less than a foot narrower than the other. So we're actually widening the sidewalk on this side of Wentworth Road, so providing a more uh, robust and generous sidewalk for pedestrian activity and connectivity out to Hancock Street, as well as to the T going uh, westbound on Wentworth, ultimately down Clay to the, the Lawson T Station. Uh, so that was something that came up through the coordination with the Department of Public Works and the peer review around the project. So from a, a stormwater management perspective, uh, this site is one that's actually impacted by some of the studies that the uh, city's peer review consultant Woodard and Kern had taken a look at for the Wallston area as a whole. Uh, there was a flood inundation study that was uh, prepared about a year or so ago that identified various flood conditions and potential solutions to help alleviate the flooding in the Wallston area. In the interim, while those uh, potential solutions are being evaluated and the city's charting a course for how to address those, we've designed a project to accommodate that local flooding that has been identified for all the various storm events. So they identified elevations for you know, the two, 10, 50, and 100 year storm events for what happens here in this area, uh, largely associated with infrastructure that's in the roadways. Uh, so until those solutions and uh, projects ultimately get constructed, we're designing for the worst case scenario here. It's not a FEMA regulated flood zone, it's purely local based on more or less infrastructure capacity all the way out to the Boston outfall at the beach there. Uh, so what we did was we took a look at the stormwater management standards, we did uh, perform some geotechnical borings to see what the underlying soil conditions were all the way down to about 40 feet below grade with uh, borings, and then we came back and brought an excavator. We dug some additional test pits to get a better idea of what the closer to the surface soil composition looked like. Uh, we identified groundwater elevations uh, that were about seven, eight feet down from the existing grade, basically sloping to the rear of the lot. Uh, so as I had mentioned earlier, in the rear of the lot, the site falls about seven, eight feet from the street grade to the low point in the back of the site. So right now there's just a drywall there. It doesn't really work. It floods whenever there's rain. You know, it just stays wet for a prolonged period. It builds up and then just eventually it drains away, but it takes a long time. Uh, so as part of the project, we took a look at what's that existing flood storage capacity that's being provided today. So worst case scenario, if the flood builds up to elevation 14, which is roughly half of the property, uh, theoretically there could be water there based on the study that the city's peer review consultant uh, identified. So we designed the project with a, a system of infiltration chambers below the garage. So the building uh, was actually designed so that it goes down half a grade, but even going down half a grade, the lower level is still higher than the adjacent grade. So on the back edge of the property, uh, essentially the street grade roughly 18, in the back, we're at about 11, 10 in the back of the property, so it slopes down along the edges. So the building essentially appears to get a little taller as the grade falls and the garage stays level. Uh, the garage elevation was at roughly elevation 13, a little bit more than 13. So we have about three, four feet exposed at the back of the building uh, below the garage level. 
So there's a system of stormwater pipes that are underneath that garage as well as stone that will allow the water from a flood perspective to enter into the building and be stored below the building and also to allow it to essentially recharge back into the ground. Uh, and during a rainfall event, the roof leaders from the building will be connected to that same system and there'll be backflows that prevent it from discharging out into the environment and everything is recharged back into the ground. So it really serves two purposes. It provides additional flood storage to match what's there today so we don't increase the burden on adjacent properties. Uh, and we also provide an improvement from reducing any of the stormwater outfall from the actual site itself when it's raining, but there might not be a flood condition. Uh, so we designed that and revised it based on the comments that we had from the peer review consultant, uh, and they're currently finalized in their review. Um, we hope to have that finalized with the, the next planning board meeting that we have in front of them. So there was a big focus on the stormwater management design, working very closely with Woodard and Curran and their engineering team to come up with a solution that worked, not only for the site, but for the neighborhood as a whole. Uh, and in addition to the system that we have behind the building and below the building, we also have new charge chambers that collect the runoff from trench drains uh, as you slope down into the garage, as well as trench drains as you slope away from the garage to the street. So you don't have any runoff going across the sidewalk, again, containing that, so we don't have any pedestrian icing problems for people that are walking around. From a utility standpoint, uh, it's fairly standard for, for a lot of these urban projects for the, the garage, again, uh, oil water separators uh, that treat the stormwater management, or treat the sewer system from the floor drains in the garage, uh, new water services for the domestic and the fire service. Uh, as mentioned for the other project, between the two of them, we have committed to replacing the water infrastructure along the project frontage in Wentworth, uh, as well as repaving the roadway at the request of the Department of Public Works. Uh, all the new uh, electric and telecommunications services will be underground, so taking the overhead surfaces uh, that provide the service to the site, bringing it underground. We have conservatively showed transformers for both buildings uh, based on the national grid standards, but depending on the overall electric demand, there might be an opportunity for one of them to go away uh, based on how the power is shared between the buildings. We'll work closely with National Grid, but we did want to plan for essentially the more intensive use, uh, so it's only an improvement if we could do away with one of the transformers. Uh, so we have allocated space because that's something that we found sometimes on these projects, all of a sudden you don't want to be surprised by something all of a sudden that shows up on a prominent corner that wasn't planned for. So we're, we're planning for those, and if we could value engineer it now based on the National Grid requirements, but I think it just helps improve the project down the road. Uh, and that really talks about the uh, the improvements from a site standpoint. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions if you have any more. Sure. That's our presentation. Okay, do you have a question for now? I'm good for now. I'm good. Those who want to speak in favor, first call. Second call, third call, call that part of the hearing closed. Any correspondence? These will be uh, put into the record and required to be adhered to. <laughs> it's another book, which will get cut way down with the planning department. Um, anyone who is opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided, first call. Second call. Sure. Thank you. Martha Bridge, 121 Clay Street. Traffic. Yeah. The traffic issue. I don't know if they go together on these two, but they seem to be separate. They would. They would take them into impact when they're when they're in front of planning for I, both of them. I love the idea of a right turn only from Wentworth sure. to Hancock. That's sure. a great idea. Maybe a right turn only from Wentworth <laughs> coming up, you know, onto Clay or, I don't know, something, but traffic's a concern. Sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's you know, two, two bigger projects and all at one impact. There's definitely yeah. going to be some impact. We need road remediation, too. Well, there's, no there's, no, there's no building. <laughs> well, I saw the we'll thing from a traffic perspective. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm just you name it. Just Neil, Neil, 72 South Bayfields. Uh, I'm mostly for this one. 
I was saying if they could somehow modify the elevator lobby and get that drop off like they have on the other projects. Um, seems to be enough room between the two driveways. Just because there's traffic and a lot yeah, of Amazon yeah. trucks. Yeah. Involves another curb cut too though, you'd have. You can go driveway to driveway. Yeah, you'd have driveway to driveway, right? That would be a challenge. Did you look at anything like that? You did. It, it, it's very challenging. If you have parking, uh, yeah. conventional, I mean, all the, all the both projects, their parking meets all the design criteria and bylaws. So to do that, I mean, it just ended up approaching too much flow to get it drop off there. So, yeah. It's unfortunate. And there's, and there's anticipation that we're going to have continued discussions and cooperation with the church. So that the area of the church parking lot um, could be could accommodate the ability to pull a truck over and, and unload and, and bring it across the street. I mean, it's not ideal, but um, but certainly cooperation even between the, the parties that own you know this site and the site across the street where there is a drop off area. But but we'll we'll have those continued conversations. It's also further back from the main from the intersection of Hancock Street. You know, I mean, I, I think it probably has less of an impact there. And and we all know we see these Amazon they they learn. That route <laughs> and they park where and the where, chances are they'll be able to pull into the driveway you know they'll take pull into the driveway stop make the delivery and pull yeah so, i mean they park where they find their fastest yeah. routes so everybody but it's we, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice it, i mean we've seen it on a couple projects it is nice it is a nice feature um anyone else opposed or undecided third call call that party here and close again i think i think it's a transformation of a of a area i think it's a good start to what you know the plans are for wallison um i don't know if you guys have ever reviewed the wallison urban redevelopment project that it, it, it's a it's a pretty comprehensive plan and i think you did a modest interpretation of what is you know the general take on what they're going to do or what they want to do with, with in terms of building heights and and first floor occupants and you know mercantile and stuff which i, I don't think it would really survive where it is here um hopefully somebody cleans up that 7-eleven <laughs> be nice if it went away. Yes, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be upset. Mm. Any comments, John? I have no comments. I, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's a blank slate, and it's kind of a no frills building. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be better than what's there now, and yeah. I think it's a good design. So. I concur. Okay. Shall we? Yes, sir. ZBA-23-62, the Marion Group LLC, for a variance to construct a new four-story, 27-unit residential building on the premise number 13, Wentworth Road, Quincy, and make a motion to accept as presented. Second. All those in favor? All right. Not opposed? So moved. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We will send that suggestion in. Thank you. Mrs. Brown. Martha. Mrs. Brown. We'll just send a note into the council. No, 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 I just, you know, it's something that they should definitely consider. Yeah. Charlie made a really good point. You'll get back traffic up there. Anybody who's ever trying to take a left there, you sit there because you have to wait for the light to change. It's just and then you, you got two lines of traffic there, you're fighting there too. Yeah. Because the stop line's right there. So we'll send a note into Chief out to make the suggestion. Last but not least. We gotta have you send flowers in or something to uh, <laughs> ZBA 2364 Cloud Nine Cannabis LLC for a special permanent variance to open and operate a recreational marijuana dispensary business on the premise numbered 15 Liberty Street, Quincy. The applicant on the representative. Good evening, members of the board. Thank you for your service. First of all, I know these are long nights. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of the, the residents. I'm going to basically just introduce everybody tonight and then sit down and let, let others uh, take over. First of all, I want to introduce the, the property owners, uh, Stephen Fairley. He's a 
longtime uh, business owner in the city of Quincy, 72 years, I think he, he told me he, he owns property down by the site, his business is down by the site, it's been there, it's a family business, it's been there for, for decades, actually. Uh, Claudia Sala is here as the engineer, uh, David Lang is here, who's the manager and actually a licensed pharmacist by, by trade, and he's the manager, will be the manager of Cloud9 Cannabis. And I also have Phil Silverman, who's an attorney with Vicenza Law in Boston. Vicenza Law is a law that um, deals solely with uh, the marijuana industry, the cannabis industry. Uh, he's uh, been utilized not just for his legal clause, but his, his um, yeah, advice in terms of the technical aspects of the, of the industry as a whole. So I'm going to introduce Phil and let him take it from there. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. And I'm just going to give you a, a handout if I could. That sure, Council. Absolutely. Of, you can just hand it to me. I'll pass it back. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Phil Silverman. I'm here for Cloud9 Cannabis, which is going to be doing business as Pinnacle Cannabis. Uh, we're speak, seeking a special permit to operate a retail marijuana establishment, 15 Liberty Street, pursuant to Section 6.11 of the Zoning Ordinance. Um, if you're familiar with it, this property is currently an auto repair shop. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to go by. If you do, you'll see in its current state, is it's not a particularly attractive property. There's cars all over the place. Um, it's you know the garage doors are, are open. It's you know it's it's something of an eyesore if I can be blunt. Um, and and this the the whole uh, project here is designed to clean up that site, present a welcoming environment for customers again over the age of 21, where they can purchase marijuana and marijuana products. Um, we're going to be seeking variance, uh, variances uh, from a variety of setbacks. Uh, the marijuana ordinance requires a 1,500-foot setback from residential districts, 500-foot setback from, among other things, public parks um, and properties uh, which are housing liquor licenses, uh, as well as a variance to allow for two illuminated signs on the building. Um, so um, again, just to sort of reiterate, so you know my background, uh, I work for a national law firm. We specialize in, in marijuana businesses, and we assist these clients in setting them up and ensuring that they remain compliant with your local ordinances and also with state law. Um, we represent about 100 clients in Massachusetts, and we've permitted over 100 projects in Massachusetts. We really think this is an excellent site for this type of a use, uh, and of course, we look forward to working with the city. Um, David Lang is here. Uh, he is uh, one of the principals of the company. He's a licensed pharmacist. Now, this is not technically a medical dispensary, um, uh, but we would note that really the most challenging aspects of running a retail marijuana dispensary aren't really the retail aspect. Um, you know, retail is not uh, the most complicated type of business to run. What's complicated about these types of business is compliance. There are protocols required by the state in terms of um, dispensing, managing inventory, uh, all sorts of procedures for access to the facility. Um, that's what a pharmacist does, and, and so we think he's sort of uh, ideally suited uh, to be managing this facility. Um, just sort of moving through page four of your handout, uh, I think it's a 2611 uh, square foot building. Again, this is going to be totally updated. You can get a picture of sort of what's going on at the facility right now. I drove by today. I think there were 22 cars on the lot today. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure creates, anytime you have probably more than one car uh, moving around that site, I suspect that it creates uh, problems out onto the street. Um, this will be significantly uh, streamlined. Uh, operation here with the way this operates. Um, we are in the industrial A district, uh, as you can see on, on sheet five. Um, it's accessible by car and public transport, but the reality of this is most of the people that are going to be frequent, frequenting this are really local in the neighborhood here. Um, not like a few years ago, people were literally driving uh, from across the state to get to the few dispensaries that are open. Those days are gone. We've got about 250 retail dispensaries in Massachusetts now. 
So the traffic and those sorts of things, um, you just don't see that anymore. So I think you'll see, you know, probably a lot of walk-up customers. Um, some people will drive, um, but it really it's more like a local neighborhood uh, liquor store or a pharmacy uh, in terms of your patronage. Um, and the site, um, just to go through a couple of details, page six on your handout, uh, has to be more than 500 feet from any schools. Um, that's, that's the buffer under uh, state law. It's also a buffer under your local zoning ordinance. And on the local level, we are uh, looking for some relief. Um, this, this site is non-conforming in its present state. Um, there are issues with the rear setback um, not being uh, you know, what, what would be required under zoning. One of the side setbacks, uh, same thing. So section 3.4.2 of your zoning ordinance uh, allows by special permit a, a change of one non-conforming use to another provided that the use is no more detrimental to the surrounding area. And I would suggest to you that uh, getting all of these cars off the lot, cleaning it up, um, and, and making it sort of a streamlined operation is really quite a benefit uh, to the neighborhood. Um, so uh, beyond that, there are buffers also for the marijuana use in section 6.11, uh, 1,500 feet from a residential district. We need a variance from that. Um, reality here, I think, is that it's very difficult to locate a dispensary within this city with that 1,500 foot buffer from a residential district. Um, and and this, this property actually, uh, compared to most places that you might have this, is, is actually pretty good in terms of some natural barriers. The rear of the building backs up against commercial uses. Um, uh, the, uh, now there are residences not that far from the property, but it is kind of uh, a barrier from the streets, Water Street and Liberty Street. Uh, you can sort of see those on there. Uh, also create a bit of a barrier from the neighborhood there. Um, so we think this is the highest, best use of this parcel. Uh, most other uses would not work here, uh, to be quite frank. Frank. So uh, if this isn't allowed, I think it's a, it's a real hardship. I, I'm also um, understand from Mr. Sala, who's going to talk, that um, what happened here, and the reason the lot is what it is, is that there were several takings, I think some by the city uh, as well as the state, that put a, for the roads and, and have really narrowed this lot. And so that sort of adds to the heart <coughs> here, I think, for the property owner of trying to, trying to site a business on this lot. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Sala come on up and sort of walk you through the site and, and how everything will work. Uh, good evening, Claudio Sala with the Selberg Sala Associates, 1266 Furnacebrook Parkway, Quincy. Uh, basically, we have a 9,000 square foot parcel, uh, exactly. Hundred ninety square foot parcel, uh, which has a present uh, auto repair shop, uh, and the rest of the parcel is basically paved. And as the attorney said, there's typically 21 to 22 vehicles on the site at any given time. Um, the the only thing we really looked at is new park and didn't propose parking for the site. Um, we came up with basically nine spaces that are comfortably maneuverable. Um, the aisle width maintains the 24-foot width minimum. Um, we have some parallel parking along the sidewalk, uh, which maintains the 9 by 22 with the 22-foot aisle. Um, no, no spaces will be backing out into uh, the street, so they will, would all have turn around and drive out into the street. Um, and we have the two spaces in the rear that are accessed by the driveway that is on the abutting property. Uh, there's a driveway here to this parking area uh, that is actually, that will have two spaces that will be used here uh, from the abutting property, which is owned by the same owner, I guess. And they are currently, that area is currently used by the gas station to go in, uh, the repair shop to go in and out. Um, they have a. They now have a dumpster enclosure, or sort of an enclosure with uh, scrap metal storage on the abutting property. That would be eliminated. A new dumpster will be brought onto the current 
lot near the back of the building. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is. There'll be no changes to site grading, asphalt building access. Um, if, if there are any other questions that I'm not addressing, feel free. Only access point from Liberty Street or is Water Street? It there are two, be, two curb access. cuts. Two curb cuts on Liberty Street. Okay. Um, they're sort of evident. Um, and then the, that. the other curb cut on Water Street oh. is on the abutting property. Okay. Uh, owned by the same owner again. Okay. Um, and I believe that will be intended to be used for employees. Okay. So. Is, there a, is there a written recorded easement for those two to cross the property line? There is not. That I know of. Uh, and I, again, it's the same owner, so yeah, I can't. There's still. I, I would just say we actually anticipated you utilizing two of those, those two parking spaces as employee uh, parking spaces, so the employees would be there first, and cars, the, the customers would come and park in front of them, so there would be no need to even access from from Water Street. So the owner, of the, the owner of the properties is going to retain the ownership of the both properties. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. I would still suggest the easement in there, just to yeah, if, if it's get it clarified. And, and not, I'm not certain we're going to be utilizing that curb cut. My understanding was that we we're going to have that for employee parking. Granted, it's tangent parking, but the two employees. Oh yeah, no, I I, I deal for for employees. I agree. Yeah. You know yeah. that's right. But Technology. I prefer to see an easement in there. Yeah. Okay. Certainly. It's only a matter of paperwork if it's the same owner, you know, just a right. grant from one to the other. So, and then, yeah, so you have two parking spaces here off of Liberty Street. The bottom. The bottom. Are they going to back out onto Liberty Street? No, no, they, they would just back, they would back out here and then drive up and exit this. Truck. Still Liberty Street. It's still right. Liberty Street. Right. But they won't back out onto the sidewalk. They'll come up and turn up. And then yeah, they will drive out on the street. They will drive out onto the Water street. street at this at that driveway. Yeah, the, the access will be from Liberty Street. Yeah, no Water Street. No. no spaces will back out onto Liberty Street <coughs> or Water Street. I don't think you'll have the option. <laughs> Get busy that corner. <laughs> well, yeah, with the with the gas station there, it's terrible. Yeah, it's tough getting in and out of there now. Yeah, when the tow trucks come by, I've seen it. Yeah. And, and I don't anticipate a lot of people actually walking to the parts store. No, no, but, that, but that there, there, are, there are oh. handicap ramps and crosswalks. I'll bring you John. Can you tell us what happens to most of the cars drive or walk? It's, uh, it tends to be. No, no, I was right. messing with John back here. Okay. <laughs> okay, professional witness. Um, on, uh, there is a floor plan that I provided on page nine in your handout. Yeah, it looks like a decent renovation. Is that? It is. is. Okay. It is. And I don't want to, uh, unless you have questions, I, no. I know you've uh, permitted these before. Uh, there's a standard way that these are done within the state. The, you've got a sally port entry, so you, you walk in, it's a vestibule, you can't go any further in until they've checked your ID, then they buzz you in. Uh, you'll actually have your ID checked the second time at the point of sale. You'll leave through the same uh, same entry and access way. Um, and uh, then just in terms of just some basics, again, I know you've, you've uh, permitted these before. 21 years of age and older. Uh, the product is dispensed in plain, in, in, dispensed in plain uh, tamper-proof, child-proof proof packaging. Uh, all the product is independently tested. Uh, no customers purchase more than an ounce of flour or five grams of concentrated product. Uh, in terms of the security, same things you've seen at all the other dispensaries uh, that you've done. You've got um, a salad board, as I mentioned. You've got a vault. All the product goes into a vault at the end of the day, stays there until the next morning where it's taken out. Um, you've got video monitoring exterior and interior. We can see 360 degrees around the building. Uh, from the security office, uh, every place within the facility where marijuana is handled or stored has a camera. Um, there are alarms on all of the doors, all of the windows, and there are panic and duress alarms throughout the facility. Um, we do have on-site security personnel during business hours, and the, the facility is monitored 24-7 uh, through off-site monitoring. 
Um, we also uh, don't market to minors or brand with cartoon characters or products that look like fruit, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, we make it very clear with our employees, you know, uh, dispensing to minors is uh, going to be met with termination. Uh, CCC has absolutely no tolerance for any kind of diversion of this product to minors. Um, additionally, you should know, um, again, by Cannabis Control Commission requirements, no product is visible from outside the facility. Um, we also monitor the outside. We're not going to allow an on-site uh, consumption of this product. When patients, uh, customers come in to the facility, we have an education process that goes first, and we explain to them. Take this product, go home, that's where you use it. Don't use it outside. Uh, if you do use it outside, we're not going to allow you back in here, and we're very likely to call the local authorities. We can't have that at this facility for obvious reasons. So um, that's sort of the, the basics of it, and happy to answer any other questions you might have. I have a couple of questions for you. Please. Hey. Um, in terms of deliveries, I see there's uh, only one entrance in and out of the front by the parking lot. What time will your deliveries be made and how is that going to be handled with security? So, sure. Um, so what we generally do with that is we use off hours, okay? And I, I can't tell you, it won't be at a specific time. We use random times um, when we do the deliveries um, and random routes for the delivery people that come. Um, uh, you know, or, or when we go out and we pick up product as well, um, you know, we, we can't have a pattern develop, obviously. Just like an Amit Castle. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what happens here is basically the car is going to drive up to the front entrance. Uh, again, it's off hours, we won't have customers there. The, these, these deliveries are very well coordinated because you have to sort of have GPS tracking from the people within the facility that know that it's coming. And it's, it's almost like a dance routine. They go out, they get the product, the, the delivery takes about two minutes from start to finish, um, just, just right in through the front door. Um, and our security personnel uh, are engaged in that as well. So my own edification, uh, my second question is, uh, in your preventing diversion to minors, minors uh, literature, indicate that the website will require all online visitors to verify that they're 21 years of age or older. How does that work? Uh, well, it's a bit of the honor system. Um, you know, we, we can't check IDs on the uh, online. No, no business can do that, obviously. Um, so, you know, we, but, but there is a question that says, you know, are you 21 years of age? And they have to say yes, that or no. Um, so that is to protect the vendor, not to protect Well, I guess I, 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 that's probably a, a good way to think of it. Yeah. Give me the uh, dimensions of the signs. Uh, I think it's 10 by 10 uh, and 20 by 8. And you have them both illuminated right now? Correct. And um, I know illuminated signs, I, I, I think your zoning allows it pretty late actually. Uh, Cannabis Control Commission, you actually can't have an illuminated sign beyond a half hour before sundown, so we'll have to turn it off uh, at that time. I'm yeah, trying to look up the illuminated. I'm trying to look up the illuminated. How about your hours of operation? Um, hours of operation, it's the same that, that's allowable for uh, your liquor stores, and so I think what that is, uh, is Monday through Saturday 9 to 11, and Sunday 10 to 9. That's where at. Size. Too big? Yeah, so we have a 75 square feet sign on this. So both of these would be larger than the larger, right? Yeah, so you'd have to we'd have to approve those if we're gonna do this as well. But we just keep them with in the regulation. Yeah, that's what I was gonna suggest. Any knock on that, that? That's fine. No no issues with that.
only other question: uh, Do they do either of the owners or the applicant? I mean, does either of the applicant have any other uh, retail stores currently? Not at this time. Okay, so this is their first venture. Correct. Okay. okay. That's all I have right now. Well, I'm still kind of concerned. Two things: fifteen hundred feet to one hundred and fifteen feet, and the traffic is terrible. I, I, I can't imagine that this is not going to add to a, a horrible corner. So you've got a couple of sets of lights. They back up terribly. Yep. I get off there to go home every night. It, it's it's a mess. I understand. Um, so let me give you some sense, though. You know, your average. Uh, number of customers is probably 10 an hour at a place like this. Your average visit is anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes. So you're not going to fill the parking, um, you know, at, at any given time. So there's room to maneuver here. Um, and quite frankly, I think in terms of the room to maneuver, what you have on there presently, there's no room on there. If you have two cars trying to move about that lot right now, they're not going to be able to move. If somebody's trying to get in when another car is moving in there, they're stuck out on the street. You're not going to have that here because there's enough room in that lot, given the amount of business and how quickly we get people in and out, that I think it's actually less harmful to the traffic than what you probably have there right now. Based on, uh, you've done this all over the state and you've seen this happen and you've also seen the changes from you know like you said driving thousands of miles a hundred miles to get to a place compared to five miles around the corner this will be our you know third <coughs> in the city of quincy which yeah. will show the, that'll pale in comparison in five years um proximity to, to to his concern proximity to schools and parks and things like that have you uh, I, I mean, I haven't seen the loitering around these places that everybody feared. I've seen it much more of, of a, it almost looks like a closed storefront. You haven't seen like people hanging around. I see more people hanging around CVS than I do, you know, a place like this. Is that, has that been your experience? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the fears haven't been realized in that sense. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you probably saw it on television when this first came out. Yeah, the first week, everybody loaded up, lines out the door. Literally you know. people everywhere east of the Mississippi River. I mean, yeah. there were literally people coming from other states wanting to see this. But there's just so many of them now um, that it's just not yeah, a fact. Yeah, up Northampton became a real big problem. They're, yeah, they were. Um, and, uh, yeah, they had a bus people. <laughs> and, 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 what's, <laughs> and what's happened is you found that Northampton is actually, some of the stores are closing because there's so many of them yeah, right yeah. now that there's not enough customers at a lot of them. So yeah. it's really changed. And in the area, you know, there are others in Quincy. So um, I, I, I don't see that as being an issue. I will say this. What we would be willing to do, and, and I think it makes some sense, is maybe uh, for the first two weeks we would have a police detail um, just to make sure there aren't those types of problems. What, what tends to happen at these places is you get your customers, and once they see how it works and once they understand the layout and what's expected of them, they get used to it. So, you know, to the extent that you might want to put a condition on uh, for, for a couple of weeks that we have a police detail. And we approve one at a far busier intersection and we've heard boo. Yeah, yeah. by the bridge. Yeah, we've yeah. heard boo. You know. Have we heard anything from you? <laughs> not a thing. Pete, not a complaint. <laughs> you, you're over there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the public park setback. Uh, 500 feet to Port East. Which public park is over there? It's, it's just a, uh, it's actually a statue. It's on the corner of water. It's yeah, technically a, a park, I would, yeah. I would say. It's city owned. Right. It's just a little it's corner. It's corner here. Park. Oh, that, that, it, it, I don't even know that it has a bench. <laughs> it's not like a uh, playground or anything. It's, there's a statue. I think it has one bench. <laughs> it, there, it does have a bench. I think there's yeah. one in the back. No, no, kid, kids come no, no, no not at all. Not at all. But technically, it does be defined as a city park, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I mean, um, I, I, get, I get the concerns, I just, I haven't seen them validated anywhere, you know, and I just, I, I you know, I'm conflicted, I mean, it's such a rat hole now. Well, that's it. I'd like to see something done with it, but. I, I was also going to say, you know, I, if, if we do. Mars about 100 years ago. <laughs> if we do approve it, like, you know, the, the, the owners are going to have a challenge in terms of they've had some, they've had some struggles in, in and around that neighborhood with people hanging around, you know. 
Well, bars closed and, and it's been less, so. I, I think, you know, uh, what what has tended to happen, and I don't, I don't know that it's a crime area or any of that, but, but crime actually goes down around these places because the degree of security yeah. is so high around these places. And our, my client has a significant interest in making sure that this area in general uh, doesn't become uh, a problem area because it's just the easiest way to get shut down is, you know. No I am sure a number of cannabis operations and every time I see one, I love it because I know security is not my problem. It is a, <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. It is significant. Massachusetts has the most stringent security yeah. in any of the states yeah. that legal. Yeah, they're very, the they're very well so. well kept. Any other questions right now? No. Nope. John, anything else right now? No, I've actually lent money to build a couple. <laughs> All right, well, we can have a seat for now. Anyone in favor? First call. Second call. I'll make a stand. I was going to say, would that have been any better? <laughs> <laughs> this is the high building you were talking about earlier. <laughs> well, I have frequented um, a couple marijuana establishments before, so. Um, the one good thing about recreational marijuana, um, one of the things the zoning board does do, we talk about the new growth. By you giving zoning variances, you allow the city to collect more property taxes. Okay, so the way they did the marijuana law, basically anyone needs to come up here and get a variance no matter where you do a business. So you have to come up here and the zoning board has to approve the location. So I worry about, I, I think one, we we need you know more. I think this is great. We get 3% of all the revenue that goes to that place. We get that directly to the city of Quincy. So um, this could generate, you know, I, I disagree with what the lawyer said that 10 people um, 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 an hour, you could have 10 people in there in, in a minute. Okay, um, if it's a good operation, um, it's going to be crowded, and sometimes the parking lot will get full. And if the parking lot's full, the people are going to have to drive to another dispensary. That's what will happen because there'll be other dispensaries. It's almost like when you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you can't get in because they're backed up on the street, or if you go by Popeyes and you can't go in, you're not going to go to Popeyes or you're not going to go to Dunkin' Donuts. At least this gives people another choice, okay? Um, I do have an issue where most of the places that I go to, um, they have one door you go in and another door you go out. So for security reasons, that's a, a much better plan. And you know, if there's a limited parking lot, there's usually one way in, one way out with the traffic flow that everyone pays attention to. Um, you know, it's hard saying that um, this business is going to make traffic worse down there because, you know, the traffic that comes out of that BJ's gas station is just crazy, okay? So, um, you know, but it's going to be similar to, to that at various given times. It depends on the operator. If the operator, like, I was surprised that the one down at the shipyard, um, I didn't think they were going to do um, enough business. So the, the market has changed. And being a recreational business and not doing medical is actually um, an advantage. So um, they don't have any places in Braintree. Uh, I expect people from Braintree to be coming here. Uh, Weymouth. I mean, most of the people that come to the dispensary, um, they're going to be coming. I disagree that many people will be walking there. Most of the people actually drive their car to the dispensary. A lot of people actually don't even have a car, and they have someone else give them a ride, and so there's people waiting in the car in the parking lot, waiting for their friend to get out of the dispensary. Because right now, all you have to do is be 21 to go into a recreational dispensary. You don't need any special ID. And then when you get your receipt, it actually says your name, on the receipt. So, I mean, they know who's buying the marijuana. So, it's a good resource. Um, you know, I just worry about one. I worry about the people who work there. You want to make it safe for the people who, you know, work there. So, when we talk about security, it's not about security um, for the customers, it's the security for the people who work there. Um, you know, one of the interesting things, they say that, um, you know, the Cannabis Control Commission, they have all these rules and stuff. Well, when the marijuana goes into the, um, you know, I'm concerned about the safety of the marijuana that's at these facilities, okay? <laughs> and if it's going into a um, 
into a safe at night. Well, is that is that safe? Is the humidity and the temperature at the right? You know, are you making sure that the marijuana you know stays safe? And then in the daytime, when the marijuana gets delivered, it's most likely going to get delivered in the daytime too. I mean, it's not like the marijuana guy is going to come at three in the morning, um, like undercover. It's going to come, you know, during regular business hours, and so. You know, it's, you know, I'm familiar with the place that I go all the time, Botera in Taunton. Um, I routinely see the guy that's checking IDs. He's also putting labels on the stuff that comes in. They, they multitask these employees. So a good thing to be, I can guarantee you this, it's going to be a lot of people that live around the Lincoln Hancock, um, you know, area around that, that place that would love to work here. So if they hire people that live in the neighborhood, they could walk there and they won't have a car. That would be a benefit. So I mean the goal is to have people who are from Quincy who are working there. So this is going to create um, a lot of jobs. It's going to create revenue. But you know, it's going to be a mess for the poor people who drive in and out of that place. But everywhere it is a mess going in. So I mean it's hard to get up to Pansia. It's hard to get out, you know, I mean it, it's a mess. but. I am in favor of this. Thank you. I was going to say, I didn't know if you were in yeah. favor or against. Eventually, he was going to get that. <laughs> Thank you for the education. Uh, anyone else in favor? Second call. Third call. Call that closed. Nice small one. Uh, August 2nd, 2023, we reviewed this middle for the above reference project and have no comments. <laughs> Easy. Opposed or undecided? I do have a few uh, letters here. Um, opposed or undecided, first call. Council, do you want to speak before that or do you want to speak after? You can tell. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. whatever. I just want to say some things that, sure. that you have talked about and uh, we had a community meeting also. Sure. Uh, James Devine, 117 Cross Street. Uh, we had a community meeting. The park across the street is called Abigail Adams Park, by the way. So, just an FYI. Uh, clearly within 500 feet, because it's about 26 feet across the street. Uh, most of the people at the community meeting, uh, their biggest concerns was uh, traffic. Uh, they talked about how when it used to be a gas station, it was pretty tough. Uh, I don't remember it being a gas station. Uh, and then uh, a few people had concerns about it's, uh, I know it's much further than 500 feet from schools, but Lincoln Hancock and Dela Chiesa are there. And some, a lot of the kids that come from um, Sterling, they might eat. The only way to get across is uh, crossing over uh, Bergen Parkway to get to 7-Eleven or where they live. So some people were talking about concerns of being exposed to that area. Um, other than that, that's about all uh, that I heard from constituents, mostly traffic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Neil, 72 South Mayfield. Uh, I'm for this project. The Whatever is there now is an eyesore. I drive past that corner quite often. There's cars all over the place. I, I think the traffic there is kind of a nightmare. If the, the guy owns the property next door, there should be an outlet onto Water Street and one onto Liberty with both right turns. Because um, you ain't taking a left onto Liberty with all the traffic there. And a way out onto Water Street to go back the other way would be good. So if there's some way to do an easement like you had talked about, where they could scoot out that way. They would make the parking lot flow better and actually make this. But they'd lose their parking if they do that. They would lose a parking spot or something if they make it one way to get out that way. Right. A couple. Uh, but they could close up one of the other entrances on Liberty Street and gain some spots back. It's something for the engineer to look at. I think it would help with the traffic concerns. But other than that, I am for the project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Opposed or undecided, second call. Hello. You, can you come up here, please? Thank you.
my name is Judy, uh, living at uh, 148 Quincy Street. And uh, well, first of all, I found two surprises tonight, and I just want to mention it. First, I didn't know there are so many projects of today. I received this letter says uh, about this marijuana uh, establishment says there's a public hearing at six o'clock. So I came here and uh, I didn't have lunch, uh, dinner yet. <laughs> and, uh, so next time, you we, we. <laughs> next time, if you plan a meeting with multiple project, you should uh, you know, make a list there. So at least we know, you know it's going to be a long meeting. Okay? And secondly, uh, surprise, surprise, and even confusion is that I didn't even notice that the uh, street number is 15 Liberty Street here. Uh, I know that uh, I'm invited here because I'm living nearby, but uh, as I recall, only a few months ago, I think, if not a year, last year or either earlier this year, there was a, a public hearing, or at least I le uh, received a similar letter, maybe not from the uh, city, but from the developer or whatever, mentioning a public hearing in the neighborhood, talking about the marijuana place on uh, Brook Road that's parallel to uh, okay. Quincy Street. So I didn't go to that one, and uh, I thought this is a continuation of that discussion, and so I don't know what happened to it. To it, it, it was already approved. Why uh, another, uh, you know, shop here? Do you know? I don't think it's been approved. So are you the same? Yeah. Yeah. Like you failed one? Oh, that's a, okay. Right? Yeah. No, that's School Street. That's School Street. Where's the other one? 159 Brook. 159 Brook. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, haven't, we haven't done anything with that one yet. Oh, uh, okay. So we haven't had a hearing for it yet. Oh, okay. So, see, this is so. This is a completely different proposal. Okay, okay. So now I understand, that just as one of the people said there, uh, this is hot. <laughs> like, I don't really want to have the, such a uh, shop there. Okay. Uh, as a, how do I say this? As a graduate from MIT's urban planning department, uh, I have to say that uh, if I know this is you know 15 uh, Liberty Street, uh, I would uh, first of all I would uh, call for a traffic uh, study, study yeah. because uh, as someone there said, this is going to be a nightmare. It is. Uh, I just want to mention two factors there. One is that even though the street is uh, called 15 Liberty Street, but all the traffic are going to be, or most traffic are going to be generated for the Water Street. The Water Street is already a heavy loaded street. As a new resident here for the past couple of years, uh, I have to say that I haven't seen any street in Boston area, especially in Quincy, it's so narrow, only one lane, and so heavy traffic. I don't even understand why people are all driving on <laughs> Water Street, and uh, so it's already a heavy loaded traffic one, only one lane, and, uh, and now you add this thing there, it's going to be nightmare. Secondly, someone already mentioned that the big uh, gas station there. So uh, my own observation is that that gas station already caused a lot of traffic as usual. But uh, recently I even observed one uh, episode. One day when the <coughs> gasoline price hike, right? Probably there were some news about uh, whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> the gasoline is saying or yeah. or about. Yeah. And, and people anticipating about that hack. So there's this traffic, this stop there, you know. So that corner is already you saw people coming from three different directions, parking there, waiting for getting into, not to say getting out of the uh, gas station. So any future uh, development in, in terms of gasoline uh, price hike or whatever 
congestion with this one, it's going to be double yeah. nightmare. So I'm seriously saying that you have to think about this traffic impact there. Okay. And uh, lastly, I just want to be honest with you guys. I don't know your uh, capacity or whatever you know official uh, uh, titles there. Honestly, I wouldn't even come here tonight if not uh, by accident or whatever, uh, by any chance. I saw a public hearing uh, news, watched the news, occurred only a couple of days or a few days ago. Talking about in Quincy, uh, there's a public hearing and the mayor showed up to talk or explain about this uh, project of uh, a refugee center in Quincy. And uh, when I watched that video, suddenly I felt like uh, I began to think or suspect, actually <laughs> suspect, that this administration of Quincy uh, City Hall uh, seems to me may not be taking public safety uh, as primary priority, because uh, maybe that news is not complete, whatever. But what it says that doesn't make sense to me is that it says the mayor came up to explain the importance of you know setting up this uh, or building this refugee center, or whatever, for the public good or so. But that doesn't make sense in the sense that for project like this, just like a prison or other you know, project, for, for planning purpose, basically, everyone thinks, oh, not in my backyard, right? So no one would want to welcome or have such an establishment unless there are other sort of benefits or whatever, right? Usually, like, like this one uh, I heard from the news, it's only the second one in the whole state. I, we're we're yeah. talking about this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I understand what you yeah, yeah. So basically, there's a, there's a cost and the uh, uh, benefit cost analysis. analysis. Yeah, right. Yep. So so for that one, I don't know what what just, went on. Just to let so, you know that that's not set, that's not being set up by the city of Quincy. It's set up by a private uh, institution here, and the city's being asked to kind of absorb it. Oh. So it's a private. Uh, oh yeah, private yeah. Service. Usually, no, no, if I, the state no. wanted to do it, the state would no, the give state, you money. The yeah. state is giving a private entity money. <laughs> The citizens of Quincy are asking to okay. be asked to okay. uh, Eastern Island, right? Yeah, to take. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so for this one, uh, in, in addition to the traffic studies, and I really hope that you know uh, people would uh, you know look into this as, uh, to, in, in terms of uh, not just the traffic but also public safety. And uh, to finish this, even on the cost and benefit side. Uh, I want to, uh, or make you suggestion that to look at carefully. Just not only just think about what he said, the three percent of revenue, you know, whatever the tax uh, benefit, but what about the uh, property tax loss if this thing happened there? Okay, the property over there, you can project the property around or whatever this area, or even whole, you know. Uh, Quincy could going up a lot, but if we have this one, another one, we have uh, 12 <laughs> different establishments like this built up in Quincy, then Quincy as a whole town, its property value could go down or do not increase at all. All right? So 10 or 20 years ago, Quincy was developing. And people were seeing Quincy like, like uh, uh, the next Newton or whatever, right? So if if uh, Quincy is still going high like that, that's good news for the city for the benefit of the revenue, probably bigger than this thing. And if you just uh, look at this and say, "Oh, great! All these shops here, I get a dozen of them, twenty dozen of them in Quincy." Ah, oh, I got that three percent. Well, it's short-sighted, and you lost your chance to become next uh, Newton. All right. So you need to do both traffic analysis and 
cost benefit analysis sure. as well. Sure. And I mean, top, on top of that, public safety is we another. We could have said the same thing when we were expanding liquor licenses throughout the, the state. You know, like I mean, it, it, I, I just I think I think I, I appreciate your sentiments, and I think that for a lot of people, it's a big change in terms of what what's happening. But I think, but you, you go to the biggest consumers of this product today, and it's not kids. It's 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 forty to sixty year olds. Like the biggest new consumers of cannabis are forty to sixty year olds. They're 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 your you know I, I forget where I was just recently. Oh, I was at a I was at a concert and the guy was talking about a sixty year old wife who is on cannabis every night so that she can sleep. So I think there's this this common misnomer that that all of a sudden we're going to bring in like the seeds uh, the the bad seeds of the world who are just going to be high on the streets and and I I just. Yeah, we, we don't see. I mean, we have we have two doctors who are who are leading here. They're, yeah, they, yeah, they have their doctors a doctorate. You know, like you're a highly educated man. Yeah, they have yeah. two doctorates who are setting up this entity. They're not doing it because it's. I mean, obviously they're doing it because it's a profitable endeavor. But they're also not doing it to attract you know the bad seeds of the world. Well, we, we, <laughs> and I'm not here to defend them. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying you need at least the three concerns, right? Two, two Absolutely. studies needed, I think, and finally a concern. I right? think your I think your concern on the, in yeah. terms of like traffic and parking is absolutely yeah. you know a viable one. I think that the corner, the intersection stinks. I think the gas station that we put there has inadequate access to it, and I think the gas station should solve their own problem. I think they should build a different entrance into the gas station, and it would alleviate a ton of the problems. I think there should be an entrance and an exit. They, they, it, it's too narrow. It's on the corner. They can't turn in and out. But it's the same thing that's going to happen with a business. If a business all of a sudden has 20 parking spots and they're being utilized, guess what they're going to do? They're going to go talk to their landlord, and they're going to find a way to get more parking during the day. You know? I, yeah. I mean, the goalpost is busy. Uh, yeah. at, at and, and all, 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 I almost forgot to mention there is actually another project we currently uh, hold on to. It. Yeah. You know that there's a construction uh, going on last year or earlier this year, but. Uh, yeah, it's on hold right now. Yeah, yeah it's on yeah. hold. Yeah. So if that's complete, that, that again, traffic. 30, yeah, 32 right. units, yeah. another 32 there, another yeah. 350 up yeah. and yeah, it has on. Okay. Yeah. Can I just? Yeah, yeah it, I, we don't. It's oh. it's good. You you all set. All right, council. What, what, did you guys do any traffic study? No, uh, no. Phil um, is very familiar with the traffic patterns. The number of cars, average as That's well not as traffic patterns. Would you guys be more comfortable if we got a traffic yes. study? I think I I just think that the board would be more comfortable if we had a traffic study just to look at it. That's what the board. Yeah, I mean, I think John, I, I, John's wavering here, and, and I, I, I think that's, you know, obviously the biggest concern for him. So uh, I think that would probably be beneficial to all of us just to I mean, see, you know, what type of what type of trip traffic we'd be yeah, looking at. I, I even if, even, would, I mean, do we need a super? Like, do, are you looking to have a, a it, some a traffic engineer peer review or are you looking to get more trip transit what these retail stores look like no what do you want yeah you want you want a full report yeah. I, I would say this um, in terms of the business that's currently there I know he's taking a little bit of a hit but <laughs> actually a great business person that's completely outgrown the site the traffic that comes and goes from that site already and the cars that park on that site he's so good at what he does that he's completely out, outgrown it, and well, he's going to be going elsewhere. This is a, this is significantly less impactful to that corner than the existing business that's been there for years. To the extent that traffic is an issue, it really, if you you, you know the number of cars sure. based on the in, in the I industry, think, the I average think number. A uh, well, you're so, right. Two, very two things happened that. there. The, the, the city and the state took a big chunk of the property right. by eminent domain, mm -hmm. and then BJ's gas went in right. and exasperated. So, as I said, I, I get which up is, that exit every night. Yeah, yeah. which which is going to be it, 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 that area is difficult because of BJ's because of the location of the entrance. I and mean, I get I get my gas there. Uh, occasionally, well, there's only two well, gas stations in Quincy. You got to go along. Well, you know, but but it's the location of the uh, of, of the entrance. To the extent that this is going to impact that traffic significantly, it, it's actually going to improve it 
based on the current condition. Well, that's what a traffic exists. engineer will tell I think, us. I think he would just be more yeah. comfortable yeah. with it. And that's, yes, that's where I just, if we, how long do you think it would take to get something Not done? long. I mean, I think, so we, we, I, actually, I can, uh, I, I did speak with somebody, and uh, I think I could probably put that together as quick as you, know, you need it. Great. So when that's meeting yeah. in the 12th, yes, is that too tight? What do you think? September 12th? September 12th? I don't, I don't believe why don't we so. Put it it on, why don't we put it on for the 12th? If, if you still don't have something, you know, that, you know, we, we, can, we can move it up. I mean, we can move, put it back to the 22nd, I think, is in, or the 24th. The, the numbers there should be 26. Yes, at 14, Brian. The I'm sorry. The man. numbers should be recent there because they just put that left turn in lane coming over the bridge. So the, the counts in there should be yeah. recent. Should be recent. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure they are. Yeah, yeah. no, he hasn't done But I'm saying you won't have to do, I don't think you have to do a count. They'll just be able to use the- Take back off what's there. existing there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a quick follow-up, are you talking you about- You can ask her? Through, through us if you had a question. Huh? You could ask through us if you have a oh. question. I was uh, here. Uh, I heard he saying something about current business there. I just wanted to confirm. Is that referring to a uh, he, mechanic? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the car. Yeah, that's something? what he's referring to. But it's okay. It's it, it, we we understand what he, we the traffic study is what we're looking for. Yeah, but no, I'm just. Uh, uh, I understand. I, under, I understand what the, you're going to say. The car business is completely different. I, I get it. Yeah, I get I it. Yeah, yeah, we know. They Thank don't you. park there. Thank they, you. They just they go there. Not Thank you, sir. I appreciate there. it. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, if you, I just feel if you could just get us that council, we'd be we'd be in a better position to to make a more educated opinion on it. Want to make a motion to continue? Yeah, just we'll go to the twelfth. Okay, ZBA dash twenty three dash twenty four. 15 Liberty Street, South Quincy, proposed recreational marijuana store is continued to yeah. September 12th. Check. Sleeping for switch there. Sorry. <laughs> Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. The ZBA 23-46. Is 23-46 here? Jason Cole? No. So can I make a motion to move that to... Uh, what? 926. Make a motion to move ZBA. What is it? 23-46. 26. The move to September. What? 26. 26. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Motion to dismiss. Second. Yeah. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? So moved. See ya. <laughs>